silly tales about ghouls chased away by garlic and vampires shrinking from crosses. He kidnapped young girls and kept them chained to give blood. Blood for her to bathe in and drink. And she bit them everywhere. No. And then she pushed white hot pokers into their faces. And when they parted their lips to scream, she shoved the flaming rod up into their mouth. Stop it. Blood. Beautiful red. Stop it. You're safe with me? I kill no one. Again? It's difficult to forget. Ah, oh, you will. After a while, it'll only be the remembrance of a bad dream. And then the remains of a remembrance. More and more faint in your mind. I have seen many a night fall away into an even more endless night. Nights like last night. Who do you think I am? A kind of ghoul? A vampire? Oh, no, my dear. If you think these ladies are something, wait until you meet Mother. She's something else. With us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and germs, to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast as we continue our threat of world domination on your internet radio. I'm your host, Colin, and I'm surrounded by the internet radio superstars. Including Stefan, I mean Brent. Um, well, you just fuck you. You stole my joke, Sean. <laughs> Travis, did you say that? No joke for the week. <laughs> Who did you think that? <laughs> no, I was going to do that. Uh, you stole it. Uh-huh. Sorry. Well, you could be uh, Valerie. Thanks. Uh, so <laughs> tonight's movie, I picked it. It was uh, Daughters of Darkness from 1971, a Belgian movie, but it's made in English with English stars. Uh, it's directed by Harry Kumel, who I don't know if he's done anything. <laughs> <laughs> After this, do you really need to do anything else? Yeah, uh, maybe. I, don't know. I did. Look, I looked him up, and he had like you know six or seven credits to his name, but uh, I am not familiar with any of them, and I'm not really familiar with anyone in the cast except for John Carlin, who was the original uh, Willie on. Um, Dark Shadows. I'll oh. say it was his name. Like Willie Loomis. Is that his name? Yeah. Willie he was the groundskeeper. <laughs> well, yeah, he gets, he's the guy who wakes Barnabas Collins up. And I want to say that probably at the time that this movie was made, Dark Shadows was still in production. So he was probably doing yeah. this like right, uh, you know, on and That's why hiatus. they just gave him a vampire movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah this like, guy. <laughs> he does vampire films. He knows vampires. So, uh, I guess really quick, just for an overview of what it's about, it's uh, John Carlin and his young bride. They just get married. Uh, They're somewhere in Europe. They're on a train. They stop off at a place called Ostend, and it's like an off-season hotel that they end up uh, staying at. And the Countess Elizabeth Bathory, Bathory? Bator. Yeah, Bator. 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 arrives. And if you know your history, you know, she was the blood countess. Uh, there was a Bathory, famous story. Right? Yeah. She uh, is a legend, like the female Dracula, Countess Dracula. There was a movie, Ingrid Pitt made uh, Countess Dracula. And uh, she's, uh, you know, killed a bunch of girls way back in the day. And then they walled her up and killed her. Anyway, she's the main character or the main antagonist of this movie. Uh, she starts making moves on the young couple. Uh, and she has a fetching sidekick servant 
Seven. Renfield? Seven. Like a, yeah, it's definitely a secretary of Renfield. Yeah, is that kind of a, a loner? What was her name? Ilona? 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 Ilona. Ilona. Yeah. So at first I thought they were like, oh, a loner. <laughs> like, <laughs> Ilona. Please, come in. Yeah. Ilona. It's a movie with, uh, I want to say, I mean, there's primarily four characters in it. Uh, one bellhop. Pierre, Pierre and Pierre. one uh, nosy detective. Yeah, yeah, just one inspector guy. He's got one scene, and then he just kind of shows up throughout the movie until he dies. He's following it. Really, okay, like a, a nothing character. Shitty. But he had an awesome scene. One awesome scene. This is what like this movie is a little frustrating to me because I always like. I always complain about vampire movies from the 70s just because I've watched a lot of them. You know, I just like, ah, fuck, you know. This lady looks like a painting this fucking guy has. So like, oh, my long lost love, blah, 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 blah. But what this fucking movie has is an awesome, awesome, awesome countess. She's awesome. Yeah. I fucking love played her by every the scene. Actress Delphine Sirig, which again I'm not familiar with her, but apparently she was in some movie called The Last Days at Marinbad, hmm. Mary Marinbad, hmm. which was a experimental art house kind of thing done in the '60s. It took place in a hotel. So again, the director goes like, hey, "We got to move to a hotel." <laughs> Delphine Sirig, and it's got vampires. John Carlin. So it puts it together, he just had but slots yeah, to fill. she slinks through every single scene in this you really movie. Can't look away, like yeah. you like watching her talk and interact with these other characters. It's well, weird. she looks like softer than everybody. Everybody looks like they're in some seventies movie. The hair's a little like you know, hair's natural, not no product, whatever, whatever. You go to her and there's like a fucking soft glow over her, and she's like this porcelain white almost, and you're like everything she's wearing usually sparkles. <laughs> yeah, no, oh yeah, it's very yeah. red. Yeah, yeah. She's in the uh, what are we calling it? The um, sequence gown. Yeah, but it's like the, the disco, disco ball, ball yeah, dress disco. at one point, which I thought was kind of really cool. And it's she so like nice. barely like she like like almost like whispers every line, but like you can hear it clear as day. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and she smiles like constantly, oh, which I think is awesome. part of her like uh, <laughs> yeah. the way that she you know even when she's telling you something that you know. If she's not happy with what you did, there's a big smile on her face. She's, like, I, working her vampire charm, like, at every moment. Yeah. At every moment. Yeah. And I like how her scene starts off. Like, like I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they could have done it a lot better. But I do like the concept of of the Countess arriving at the hotel and just the bell, the bellhop dude who's, like, fuck, probably, like, in his 60s or something. Like he looks like a right yeah. Pierre or whatever. Yeah. But he talks about how, like, how when he was a boy, there was a chick that looked exactly like her and said it was the Countess uh, Batney or whatever. And she's like, I couldn't be. I'm that, you know. That's my name. My mother. Yeah, probably. Perhaps. And like, meh, 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 meh. But yeah. I, I just like that. I thought that was cool. I like how startled he was. Like, they could have played that off. Like, almost not even, like, had him, like, had her, like, him talk to her right away about it, you know, but still. Right, it just still kept a, it as a, like, Yeah, intrigue. just something, like, like why does he look at her like that? What's going on? And then explain it later. Well, which they do like... plenty of, which they don't, like, there's plenty in this movie where they go to a scene, and they leave a mystery, and they don't fucking return to it for the whole movie. And it's just like, <laughs> what was that about? We'll never know. It's on the cutting room floor or something like that. Well, I no, like the, uh, like what well, well, you were talking about earlier, the uh, detective, because there is this guy, I mean, he's riding around on a tricycle or yeah, whatever. Yeah, bicycle. Yeah, <laughs> tricycle. Sorry, it's it is a bicycle. bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, you know, he is aware that there are vampire murders or whatever over in Bruges, which is right next door to us then, apparently. And uh, he suspects the Countess because, do you not remember when we met before? We never find out, like, where that Nothing. happened. I mean, no. she well, doesn't I can only remember admit him. It, was, it was when she was at that hotel again. It couldn't have been 40, 40 years. years ago. Why? That guy well, would have been he, so young. Well, he said he was a kid. Oh, uh, yeah. No, the, Pierre said he was a kid. Well, I thought he did, uh, too. I thought he said something. I thought that dude said something about his the mother. Madam remember when we met before or something like that. I thought that guy said something about, like, how him and his mother, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember. Nowadays, there'd be a comic book that came out before this movie that would explain. Yeah, yeah. All these, well, yeah, they should have fucking like at least one because I thought that scene was awesome. The one thing that this movie has is music, right? And oh, they yeah, just know yeah. when to be like. Yeah, I love this. And the guy's like, "I know you. Dun, 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 dun. We met before." Dun, dun, dun. You know, yeah. I just I was like, "Yeah, holy fuck, they holy shit, he remembers her too." But it's part of like I guess what I was looking at it as is like his character fills basically the vampire hunter. You know, like because yes. this movie tries to, and this is kind of why I like it. It tries to subvert your expectations of what you're going to get out of a vampire movie. It already knows that you've seen a fuckload of these movies because they were being produced all the time. 
time at this period of time. And so it's like, you know what? We're going to change this up so you can't see it coming. So he basically sets up the, I know the legend of, uh, you know, uh, or I know that there's a, you know, I'm, I'm coming after the vampire. I know there's a vampire. And then, you know, he's always like hanging around in the background of shots and, you know, spying on them. And then she kills him, apparently. Again, apparently. Not, not, not the best executed scene in the world, but just by <laughs> running him off the road. And it, so it's like, oh, I thought he was going to be the guy that in the end, you know, was going to come in and pound the stake into her heart. No. But he runs her off the road. Yeah. So you didn't see that coming. I think that was the intention of yeah. how they set his character up. The, you yeah. just see these, like, left turns in the story it and is. be like, huh. I didn't tons, see that coming. Tons of left turns. Well, because maybe, everything I expected from this movie never happened. Until well, maybe the end. But, well, yeah, and with a left turn, you want it to pay off at some point in the movie where a lot of it's, these left turns are dead ends. No they're, payoff. Yeah. Because it's like, it's almost like if, if they, if they would have just had a scene between the inspector and the bellhop about that whole situation, that would have at least given him one more scene where he's investigating this yeah. fucking vampire woman or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's very peripheral. But I like how she, like, so she, so she, what, so she shows up with her little, like, was she French? I just want to say she's yeah, French. Because she's, we'll she's, like, she's wearing scared. that little she black dress, she, she has, has the little, haircut. like, bobby cut. Oh, God, she's hot. He, oh, she's, <laughs> a, she's hot, but I don't like when she opens her mouth. Because that's when her mouth looks really wide. I, but that's a thing you gotta watch the movie to get. <laughs> but, <laughs> so so, so the idea behind this is, I mean, I, like I said, this movie is very like keen at like trying to drag out a mystery where you know the Countess is just like, look at the couple, right? Oh, they're so beautiful. If you didn't know it's the vaguest movie in the world. Oh, it is fucking vague. You're like, because you gotta wait. You gotta like, what? what well, and also, what she want from at her? that point? <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I was thinking that the uh, Countess is his mother. Because dude's talking he, about his okay, mother. Exactly. Right? That if, whole storyline goes no way. Right, right. If, if it does, I agree. Yeah, I think it does. I have an no, explanation. Well, hold, for on, that. hold on, hold on. Let me. It, can I explain it, this real quick? Well, hold on. Well, I, 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 my thought ends real quick. If if nothing else, it does end real quick. Because I forgot what the fuck I was gonna say about the mother. Uh, no, if, Countess uh, as the mother. If if uh, <laughs> the, uh, go. <laughs> okay, so as soon as they get married, the first scene is t- they're talking about how, like, oh, the mother won't like her, you know. Because the the guy, he's like, arist- he's an aristocrat. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. She's Chilton from Manor. Sweden he's from or Chilton something. Manor. She's lowborn, basically. Yeah. yeah. And he marries her. Oh, right. If nothing else, I thought he was, uh, he. He was part of a uh, vampiric family, uh, but was denying it, yeah. and he didn't want to tell her right. about it, Valerie about it. Because they totally make you believe that. They totally make you believe that, like, this fucking dude knows what's up. Right. Oh, I this never guy got knows that. what's Secret. going on. Well, you, what do yeah. you mean? Because then he calls, what are you like? Okay, he's like, he's like, yeah, I'll call my mother when we get to the hotel. Then he, like, walks up to the Pierre, the bellhop, and he's like... <laughs> Will you please phone my mother for some reason? Like, I can't do it myself or whatever. And hands him a message like, say there was no reply. It's like, <laughs> okay. So obviously this guy's hiding some shit from his yeah. life. And he always has like really like fucking mean looks. Like yeah. off into the like, you know, the, the camera in the corner or whatever. The fuck. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, when I first saw this, I read that as like, you know, because he had married this girl, mother just wasn't going to like it. And clearly mother is a dominating presence but, in his but life. But then he puts like an like a fucking mean look on his face where you're like, that fucking guy. I mean, you yeah. automatically just like, oh, she's a sacrifice or something. <laughs> like, See, I, but yeah, but when you I actually not, find out who mother is, I think it it, it explains all that. Because, okay, is? okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I want to well, get to that. Mother's the dude on the phone that we never see. Again. Just a dude on right. Well, you see but him. But mother does exist. But though. he's like, yeah, a, mother exists. When he, when he finally makes the call, this, yeah. this is, I mean, this is why I kind of like this movie because, it, it it you know it's going to be there's vampires in it you know I mean although they're vampires Are there? where they basically yeah try to get rid of that as much as possible yeah they do you know so it's like revisionist yeah, vampire yeah. vampirism but I like the fact that like Stefan and Valerie have like this thing going on between them that is interesting for like the first half of the movie until the Countess becomes like the more dominant character yeah at least in the second half I think the the wind comes out of Stefan's sails once he actually does make the call to dreaded mother and then you find out like it cuts to Chilton Manor and in like this arboretum yep. the right word yes. there's this 
uh, I mean, what do you say? He, Flaming Queen. He looked like a gay dude. vampire. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's dude like, in pancake makeup, like, and he's he this, is, uh, he's this fey guy, like, you know, doing the, like... He looked like the governor he, of Louisiana made, for, like, the second season He married of and True had Blood. a kid to continue his legacy, but other than that, he's gay. So, See, uh, I don't even think that. I don't think that Stefan... I don't think that's his quote unquote actual mother. Right. I think that that guy oh, no. it was you know somehow like Stefan is the rent boy. You know, he's like some kind of like kept uh you know partner. And so it's like he yeah. goes Yeah, that's what I get out of it. See, I was, so I was, he and then he's like, you know, on like this travel through Europe and he's trying to like, you know, he meets Valerie and so he's trying to like have like a normal relationship and that's why he's fucked up like the entire way through this movie because he's got like uh he has an affinity for death, like that's like well, way he, over the top. I don't know he if it's death like, that's sadomasochism. What I, exactly. I want to talk about that just for a second. Cause yeah, that's what I that's what I thought the gay vampire guy was talking about. I'm gonna keep. Wait, talking. just so we're clear, he, the, the he's guy is not, not a, a gay vampire. vampire. But he that is, is totally what you think. <laughs> that is what you think when you're watching this. It's like that guy's a gay vampire. Did you think that when you were watching it, Brent? Uh, I thought that he was a definitely a vampire. <laughs> he was like, so pale. Oh. I thought that Stefan was. Yeah. Like part of affiliated with him in some way because when he says you know like why did you possibly think that that could work getting married to this girl it's like what is he talking about like he's talking about like bringing a human into their you know their well, talking I, about bringing but, a girl into their well, like boy I, love least, situation well, but I but, at least <laughs> thought they were talking about because once you start getting all into the S and M shit how you start to find out that like when they okay when they see a dead body who you know like. Was murdered by the vampire, drained of blood, or whatever. Uh, uh, Valerie, was it Valerie? Valerie. Valerie sees that it excites, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Stefan. And in a way, it kind of excites her too. So yeah. you're kind of like, is this what he's hiding? The idea that he's like this crazy sado fucking masochist or, or whatever. And then I thought, I thought that the, the, the guy who's, uh, you know, called mother or whatever. I thought maybe he was like I don't know the head of his S and M club. I don't know, just something, right? I didn't. I mean, but no. well, I mean, the, there's no at no point in time do you think that Stefan is part of any sort of like gay shenanigans going yeah. on? Because like the first frame of the film is him fucking this girl. Right? Yeah, apparently that was a movie first that to open a movie really? with a sex scene. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, I, I mean, did he's, not know that. he's established as a heterosexual oh. character, and then you like, it's like, wait, what the? So he's doing what? Like, who's his mother? You know? Yeah. So then it's like, oh, that's why he doesn't want to call mother because that's like, you know, his sense of identity. But why don't, is, but you know, why don't they go into that? Because they don't go into that. That's why well, it's so here's frustrating. Because anecdotal like, thing. Fuck? Uh, apparently that was uh, so the scene with mother was shot independently of the rest of the movie, obviously, yeah. and uh, they. I, they, I can't remember if they didn't tell John Carlin or, you know, it's like it was an idea that came up to them like, huh, you know, it would be weird if like that was a, a man. So when John Carlin was shooting the scene, I don't think that he knew that he was, you know, he just thought he was talking to like, you know, his overbearing mother. Right. It was when he saw the movie later, like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> But that was one of those moments in the movie, like where you're like, what in the fuck? And like, and that's like, you can't forget this movie after you've seen that. It's like, this is the one where the guy's mother turns out to be but a dude. It's, it's interesting. A yeah. That, I mean, even the mother fact does exist. Mother, mother does exist. That is not, I don't it's think, just, I don't think we're arguing that. But no, but mother exists like a female mother. Well, she's never mentioned. Right, but she does exist. Are we sure? Well, I mean, yeah, but that he must have been birthed by a female? <laughs> yes. It feels like there's another half to the, to the gay vampire sitting in never, the arboretum. See, I don't know. Are I, you sure Mother actually exists? I thought he, he was talks? being, like, tongue-in-cheek about it, though. Like, tell him Mother. Because he knows that, like, the I mean, dude he can't saying, like, call her anything else. Tell him that Mother sends her yeah, regards. Yeah, he knows, like, he's talking about always himself. that? Okay. Yeah, 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 because he's like, are you there alone? You know, he hears that someone's with him. He hears the girl with him. So I think he was just being tongue-in-cheek. I don't think Stephen there is a is Mother. He's fucked up. See, now that now if you go oh, back well, now, and look at his behavior before that, I think it's like, so this is a guy who's like, you know, he's, he's trying just, to have normalness yeah, with her. But he has like a uh, fucking uh, crack running through like yeah. his psyche. But do you think that even I think like maybe even the director told him that he was a vampire in the film because like all of the reactions to, you know, like the blood and the like. That uh, was it's it's reaction to the to the sadomasochism. Yeah, yeah. Like that oh, is the yeah, thing. Yeah, that is yeah. his shit. He right like there. cut his neck shaving. He was like, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 <laughs> now yeah. that we talk about oh, it, don't look back on it. All makes yeah, fucking sense. Yeah. When he's the, 
warped. Countess starts getting at him. Like they're, what they're describing is all the all the shit that the Countess would do to the versions. You the, know, the, the just, just the torture, yeah, torture. Yeah, yeah. The detail of the torture. And he's like yeah. wetting his pants he's at that point. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I thought she same. was getting off on it too. I thought she was. Well, she well, was they too. They well, yeah, were. because she's the blood Countess. I like the way right. that in that. No, scene, no, 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 no. I thought Valerie, the wife. No, she was like, stop it, stop but, it. But, like I said, they kind of, because te- I mean, I'm fucking telling you, when they see that dead body, she's going to give him a hand job on the fucking bus. She is a little fucked up, too. Well, I, she, yeah. I, I think, think she is. Innocent. I think, no, I, I think, think she's she knows so, it, what she realized because she talks well, about She doesn't him. want to dive into it. Right, well, yeah, she Once realizes. Once you open that, like, fucking she, can of worms. She realizes, she sees what he felt when he saw that dead body. Like, that triggered something in him. And she's like, I mean... At that point, for her, that was like the tip of the iceberg. So she's like, you know, going into it. Like, well, yeah, well, seems well, to the, like this. Let's see. Yeah, where she, it goes. she wants this, to, but make she doesn't know how deep happy. that runs. Yeah. Well, they yeah. try it that night, don't they? That's when he hits her with the belt because he sees no, like he the hits count- her after he calls mother. And I don't think they're trying. Well, that. yeah, I think I'm talking, he, no, I'm talking. No, we're talking her, about yeah. when we're talking about when the countess and uh, when they're explaining the victim, the torture, then. Oh. Valerie's like I thought she was getting into it for a minute but then she like freaks out like we can't do this and she like goes upstairs but then when does he hit her with the belt because she does go through with the sadomasochistic he fucking starts punching the fuck out of her hits her with the belt it's it's directly following the conversation with mother because after the scene where you're talking about where it was between yeah because the 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 um the Countess and Stefan have yes. their moment. Valerie leaves, goes upstairs. When he follows her up and the Countess comes up, she's like, I don't want anything from you. Like, just get out oh, of here. You're right. sick. And so he's like, well, maybe tomorrow, madam, you know. And so, and then that night, then she's like, you know, tomorrow, you know, when are you leaving or whatever? And he's like, I'll call, you know, tomorrow morning, I'll call mother. And then it cuts to the morning. She calls mother. And then after that, he stands is up when, and you see him make yeah, he fist. makes a fist and he's like, get over here and starts beating her with a belt. So it's like, whoa, what? So he beats his wife. Yeah, but, yeah. but they were, try, but they were trying a sexual thing. It wasn't beating the wife. They were trying something I, sexual because that's I, when, when she leaves in the, I the morning. I she knew at that point. No, oh, she is was, that the one where she, like, he flips away she, from her and the countess and Ilona are out the window looking at them? Because there's one time when, that like, was later. That was no, that later. was separate. Oh, okay. Because, okay, when she, because she wakes up in the morning, she's got the fucking belt welts all over her, mm-hmm. right? She yeah. gets dressed. She fucking leaves. She's going to get a train and get the fuck out yes. of there. The countess is like, well, I can't have this. I got to, you know, she's like my girl or whatever, whatever my the countess is interested yeah. in for. Well, yeah, we don't know that yet. That's the mystery of the movie. But, uh. So she goes after, and then Valerie says that she wanted to try it, but it feels demeaning, you know. So she knew that they were having a that, that was a sexual act. He wasn't beating her. She knew it was a sexual act. She was just trying it because she did see how she, even she was turned on by the dead body. What? I think she was. She was. I think Valerie is turned on by his aggressive dominance of her. Somehow that. Like, satisfied? Because that's basically the Countess then subverts that, in makes the, Stefan weak by in, catching him in, in the a bus, setup, it, and then she asserts herself and becomes that dominant character in Valerie. But in the bus, in the bus, right away, she's like, you got, you know, you got excited when you saw the dead body. He's like, and you you get excited by telling me that you know, you know? I mean, yeah, I, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like, We're yeah, I mean, she's not fucking innocent. No, she's she's, not. she's creeping into the world of sadomasochism or whatever. And then she finds so, she doesn't like it. So now that we, we've figured on the, the weird gay Stefan fucking thing, let's look at the other aspect of this whole fucking movie. Like, the whole point of this goddamn movie is... is The is, tree that everybody keeps walking through? No, the, yeah. uh, <laughs> the countess... Keeps referring to what men are, you know. <laughs> men are these these vicious things, and women have love with each other. And like, I mean, it's cr- it's actually well, yeah, really she's weird. She's a predatory lesbian vampire. I mean, that's what you would say to your. Which would you know, be a better title for this movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's trying to she's trying to break the relationship between Stefan that's and Valerie, sure. so she can have Valerie all to herself. Or apparently, replacing I- Ilona, yeah. who is. De- Pressed and wants out of this, like yes. you know, eternal <laughs> relationship yeah. with the count, countess. <clears throat> 
So she has Ilona go sleep with Stefan. She goes to console Valerie. And then, like, look, I'll show you what men are like. And takes her back. And, you know, they're... Which I don't think she counted on the whole accident, right? Dead. Yeah, yeah. I think Valerie was supposed to walk in and Stefan and uh, Ilona in bed. Yes. Yeah. But unfortunately, apparently vampires in this movie can't go into running water. I think she's a vampire. Well, whatever she, she is, is definitely afflicted with evil. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's yeah, yeah, a running water before when it's raining it. out, and like Ilona is going to leave. I'm leaving you, and she's like, "You don't be ridiculous. Like, you can't go outside." Running water is like yeah. one of my favorite, like old timey, like anti evil recipes that they don't use in movies anymore. You know, it was supposed to be like they can't cross a running stream. That's yeah, why Sleepy yeah. Hollow can't cross the bridge. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so I, I like that they use that in this, even though they use it in a shower. Yeah, which she's a stupid vampire anyway for staring at him while he's taking a shower completely naked. It's like, well, what do you want, woman? Yeah. What do you think is <laughs> so he's like, get in the shower with me, and pulls her in. You're like, no, no, no. And then uh, some really awkwardly staged uh, a comedy stuff. of errors happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which ends up with her falling on a uh, straight razor, shaving it's like razor, sitting straight. She, up? She, gra- she grabs it for like 10 minutes and yells <laughs> oh, I can't let it go she can't oh, yeah. that's the oh. one thing she grabbed onto was the straight razor and that's almost a foreshadowing to a later death scene that is like that. if that's ridiculous this is tops that <laughs> with, the, with the bowl the crystal oh, bowl yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah the crystal bowl is crazy <laughs> we'll get there I'm yes. sure. yeah. so was that even a death scene I don't know it, it, well I think so but I, you know <laughs> I can see this comedy verse thing happening cause like they're all slippery they've just been in uh, you know the bath there's tile sure, on the floor. Yeah, it was just time. very weird. But like the, How do you I set a straight ways. razor sitting straight up? The <laughs> losing your balance, not being able to grab anything on the shelf except for the straight razor. Oh, then, nail polish, oh, toothpaste, oh, oh, as, if, ah! as if it were electrified, <laughs> not being able to let go. <laughs> and then... <laughs> she turns the faucet on, then grabs her... And she, no, she grabs the electric razor, then turns the faucet on. Ah! It's just this, like... See, the comedy is in the wide the shot of that scene. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Because yeah. all, it's all in close ups, but if you saw the wide <laughs> shot of that scene, that'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because then he's like, "Oh, I'll help you." Whoa, and he like, <laughs> right. he slams her into the wall, he steps and then... on the floor, and then slides across yeah. the tile for ten minutes. He should have stepped on a fucking bar of salt. That would have like made it priceless. <laughs> like, no problem. I'll help. And then it like hits the wall five times, knocks <laughs> yeah. the straight razor on Lands the floor, in her mouth, <laughs> gulps it down, <laughs> starts burping up. She bubbles. dies, but with bubbles coming out. Yeah. Oh, that, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. The remake of this scene. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so they burst in. It's like I like how I mean automatically it's crazy because automatically chick. Well, it's so weird because I like how Valerie she's able to kind of stay. I mean, she thinks this lady's creepy. She doesn't like. She can see how this lady like you want to fuck my husband. She sees that clearly, right? That's why she's like, "You disgust me." No, you, that, she was saying that because I think at that the moment when she says, "Because you know the Countess and Valerie go off and spend some time together," and I think at some point, like the Countess bends over and kisses, kisses her, her hand. And at that moment, I, the way I read it is at that moment, you know, Valerie realizes that the Countess, you know, has like a lesbian uh, attraction to her. So you disgust me, and I think it's like coupled with the fact that she's like obviously into you know talking about at least or entertaining you know like these ideas of ghoulish you know murders and stuff oh fascinating but you know (laughs) ghoulish but fascinating there seems to be a i mean within the seduction depending on like when valerie's right around the countess she's like totally like you know putty in her hands but like the farther away she gets from her she'll start going back to stefan and you know she'll start to forget all that you know and like well, that That's I think later. that really kicks in after, you know, it's like, so, I mean, you know, from Valerie's point of view, she's just walked in, found out, A, that, her, you know, her husband of three days, right, is now cheating with her. Yeah. That he killed, you know, he has this thing about, you know, murder, blood, and, Which, you know, what, way, and he killed ever, this girl. Did we ever see where the straight razor actually went in? Because it's I like it went in her back. Stuff. She was like holding back. it. She was holding it. And she put her hand down to... to Stop herself from falling, and, and then he falls on her, and it shoves it Driving into her back. Her right. well, yeah. <laughs> he apparently passed out for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> you get that like, nice oh, shot what there. have I done? But that's interesting too. I guess the way that Stefan responds to that is, you know, I guess from what we had seen of him. Right. Set up to that. I expected he something would love more. It. Yeah, but he's like in shock. Yeah, he, he just kind of like goes it. and and you know can't believe what he's done. 
And the countess like immediately takes charge and is like just ordering, you know, Valerie around, like, here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna go do this and get the oh, towel. She like fucking like shoves her head. Yeah, 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 it was yeah, really yeah. weird. That's what she I was becomes, like. She becomes Stefan basically in that moment. She becomes this like dominant, physically aggressive, you know, just ordering this other girl around. But I love that shot. Well, I just thought it was weird how Valerie became so fucking submissive all of a sudden. Well, at that well, point, it was after at she, that, after right. the... At that point, No, she it is. wasn't after the bite. It was. It, well, that was before the bite. I think that as maybe shock. She maybe. becomes more, like, translate after, after the bite. I mean, she, at, for some reason, yeah, under, her, under a spell at some point. It's either it side with, you know, the Countess or side with Stefan, Stefan that, yeah. who has, you know, basically just shattered her whole idea at of their point, future yeah. and everything. Yeah. Like, but at that point, she goes with yeah, the Countess. Yeah, yeah. It's shot in such a great way, though, because in the foreground, half the frame is Stefan sitting on the edge of the bed, and he's, you know, just in shock of what has just happened, and then in the other half of the frame, you're down this long hallway into the bathroom and you can just see this, you know, the countess ordering her around, telling her what to do and there's a lot of action going on. Yeah. Yes. It's a really cool shot. Indeed. Well, I think I the like hotel it. itself is like, you know, like well, a character in yeah, this movie. Nice I was going to ask you, uh, is was that the actual, I mean, the obviously the exterior and the, interior, the interior were not the, the same. the exterior? I'm yeah. not Was entirely it a set? sure. No, it's not a set. It's an actual hotel because on the Blu-ray they actually Is like it? take a walking tour of nice. the uh, oh, nice. hotel again. Yeah, Is it, Pierre still there? <laughs> did they use it during like the down season? Because I mean, there is. Yeah, but that's just weird. That's like a weird idea, right? Like the off season or winter in Ostend is like there's nobody anywhere. Nothing. Nothing there. No. Yeah. <laughs> they have these huge wide shots of the hotel. And there is nothing. <laughs> is that one of those places where, well, don't like Germans get like man, they get like three months vacation from their government? Yeah, everybody. They take them in the summers and they dotty. go to Spain. Everybody. Yeah. What's yeah. funny though is I heard that that's actually a way to kind of cover up that there's not enough jobs for everybody. You know, <laughs> that yeah. way everybody gets three months off. It's like well, a break like of a... labor. You know. But are they paid? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah paid, it's paid, but it's all, I'm sure it's taxpayers. Yeah. They right? have the, paid, the motto you know? of uh, <laughs> taxpayers, work to live, not yourself. live to work. It's right. the inversion, yeah. I guess, here. But, but it's still, it, I try it. <laughs> their GDP, like, doesn't grow at all compared to ours. Sure, yeah. like, double digits to theirs. There's like, a little history. Yeah. <laughs> a little reality in our... <laughs> but it's always, well, that's why it was empty, I, I imagine. Well, there's a <laughs> thing that, you know, I still haven't narrowed in on what it means, but it's a symbol that's clearly in the movie and shows up multiple mm. times where, uh, you know, characters are always looking out the window and way in the distance, there's this one cruise ship going by yeah and i'm like is that a wistfulness for something is like that's where the people are or like well, you know, we're thinking so, about leaving right we're so disconnected from yeah but i mean like the moment they get there i think they, they look out and there's this one you know because you're in a situation where there's no one it's basically them and the bellboy and there's i mean you don't see anybody else in this town i mean there's no sign of life anywhere but out there on the horizon there's a cruise ship that's when we need to cut away to the cruise ship with people <clears> going oi We've been here for five fucking days. <laughs> when are we leaving? <laughs> There's always that cruise ship. Maybe it's a ferry taking people from places. That's what that I, I don't know. That's what I thought because she was getting ready to just leave when, when, when after uh, after Valerie got like uh, beat or whatever her little her little. I don't know though. I mean, it could... sadomasochistic thing. I mean, she was ready to leave and get on the boat, right? It's almost like you're under this, you know, vampire spell when you're at the hotel and like nothing. Like there could actually. Be people around? I don't know, but like you, there's you don't see anything else. No, I, I don't think there is people there. I mean, I think it's yeah. like it's like some sort of like alter reality or alter Whoa, dimension. You're getting deep, deep. And then I always, you always I always deep. do. But then, <laughs> with, like Colin say, you know, when they look out, it's like you're you're looking out to uh, to reality or to humanity. I don't know something. something. That, I, I think it's yeah. I can see that it's getting away from solid like solitude or whatever. It's yeah. almost like it's There's almost like the overlook hotel, other, yeah, right? There are other people yeah, there. they're like yeah. stuck there, right? For sure. Well, another thing that struck me about this movie, and maybe it's just the time, but like seeing like these European movies, I just watched Tombs of the Blind Dead not too long ago, and that's a movie that takes place uh, in Spain, but it's basically these people are like vacationing somewhere because everybody in Europe is vacationing all the time in these movies. I mean, this is like the staple. 
Somebody's on vacation. They get on a train. They just decide, eh, we're going to get off here. I don't know how long are you going to stay. Eh, I don't know. Eventually, we're going to go somewhere else. <laughs> you got so time like, to adventure. Yeah, because, like, yeah. in my mind, there's off. always, like, you know, you got to oh. know, you know, like, well, we got to be here by X time if we're going to take advantage of this. But to, in all of these movies, it's just kind of like lollygagging. Yeah. You know? Well, because they are all connected, you know, you can live. Yeah, you got to take a train. To, you know, like, you can live in it. France yeah. and, like, go to Romania, you know, you can... And it yeah. always seems like money is not an issue. Yeah. Like, right? just spare Fuck no these expense. People. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because even in that other movie, you know, again, that I was watching, it was probably the, we're uh, as big as consumers as we are now. <laughs> you know? Wow. I don't know. They got the wow. fashions and stuff. Yeah, I'm just I mean, saying. I'm just saying. They still have like. Uh, but they know. didn't have like movies on video. I mean, you had to go to a theater. To go. I mean, people went out to do shit. They yeah. lived their life back in the day. Well, maybe because travel was cheap. If you get to like, probably that on too. a train ticket and just be like, then, yeah. we'll get there whenever. You know, I yeah, don't know. back then, I would I would assume. Yeah, because these are like we're talking about like early there are early to mid seventies. Yeah. yeah. Technology. All right, so <laughs> okay, but then so, you get to learn uh, these exciting things about uh, you know European vacations. Yeah, you're like, you know so much <laughs> in the seventies about <laughs> European vacations. Feast on I've seen giant. the movie. I did, like that, <laughs> <laughs> I did like that. I knew where, where Bruges was before I saw it in Bruges. I was like, Bruges. oh, in Bruges, Bruges. Bruges. I've heard of Bruges. Bruges. That's where that Bruges. movie Daughters of Darkness takes. Bruges. 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 You're in Bruges. Bruges. On a job. You're in Bruges. So, uh, it's a fairy tale, please. I mean, so I mean, I think, I mean, I'm not mentioning the idea that, like, you know, oh, the, I mean, I understand that the countess is separating her from, but as you were talking about how the director, like, oh, what if this guy's gay, whatever, I'm telling you, I think that was like a, like a conscious choice to be like, like, man, yeah, you know, men, oh, fucking men, you know, they do, I mean, because, I mean, I'm not saying that, like, that's his point, but I'm just saying, because, I mean, you could see where the movie, whoop, totally goes that direction, where she's just constantly drilling on men around Valerie, she's just tr- kind of getting under her skin about what, what yeah. role men play in the world, not just Steven or Stefan yeah. or whatever, but they're about war. But it also, about, you know. but it also has the effect of like the count, the countess influence, you know, and because she's For drawing sure. Valerie away, encourages Stefan to become more aggressively masculine as far as like, I am a man thought- and she is my woman and she is going to do what I say. And the countess is like, you know, if, you know, would she if, actually do that? You if know, you let her go? <laughs> yeah. Would she still be here? Yeah, yeah. She's always asking these questions. So uh, that's actually kind of interesting because I'm just thinking about this now. <clears throat> like, like he does assert, like, his masculine. If he's in some gay relationship, you know, oh, like, on the, the side. Taker. Oh, no. Yeah, because I didn't even think about that before. That you know, <laughs> He's a power bottom? Jesus <laughs> Christ. He's that, bottom. He's becoming, <laughs> that he's becoming more, you know, like... Well, you know, he, dominant. He is until he kills uh, Alona. Alona. Yeah, but he oh. makes that speech about like at the end where he's like, "She's coming with me," and like, "You're not standing in the way," and I'm a man, and she's the my, the woman, and she's coming. You know, I mean, that's how he's yeah. setting up. Yeah, he's like, know. "I'm a man." You are a woman. Woman and woman do not belong to him. Yeah, that is yeah, what he's yeah. saying. But yeah, but then uh, he, now he that he you're thinking it, about yeah. it, it's like, but his situation <laughs> is that fucked up, you know? Mm-hmm. Like so, yeah. Maybe he just needed it, that to see. I don't know. And then what does it get him? It's like, well, that's what I'm saying. That's, <laughs> that's what he's saying. Like, he's like, look, look what this like bisexual lifestyles led us to. Let us as a man and a woman leave this hotel. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, by that point, it's too late and Valerie has fallen under the spell. Yeah. Of the, she of got, the blood well, I like how this movie doesn't show bites and all that shit like that. I thought that was cool. Yeah, it doesn't no go for those. Right. Anything you expect from a, from yeah. a vampire movie. Again, it's it's you you know what it is. Yeah. But it just keeps it in kind of the shadows, vagueness off the I, side. I kind of wanted some fangs. I wanted something I like this. There's shots in this movie of people's mouths, and you're like, you're, you're kind of you're waiting for it. Yeah. Like whether it, whether the movie at this time knows that you're waiting for it, I don't know. And just decides yeah, they, to not they play did. to oh, what yeah. you're expecting because this is after decades and decades yeah. I mean, of the Hammer right. vampire. Mo- I mean, it was you know, right. and even at that time, like the lesbian vampire phenomenon. I mean, if you go and look back, there's at least twenty. Uh, lesbian yeah. vampire movies made in like again it's all like French 
uh, French, Spanish. We will chronicle, chronicle them all. <laughs> well, you've seen the Vampire Lovers. Have we seen, yeah, all yeah. seen the Vampire Lovers? I mean, that's 70. I'm not. I'm I not. don't like Vampire oh, Lovers. Oh, man. No. I have a copy of it on my shelf. Sure Compliments. The trailer. So, there you go. Yeah. It's all in here. Somewhere. The vampire Lovers. Well, most of the vamp- lesbian vampire movies that came out were all derivations of the story Carmilla. Anyone? Yeah. Anyone? Yeah, she was the first vampire. Well, aside, there was Dracula, then Carmilla, then there was uh, Varney, Varney the Vampire. Yeah, I think Varney was even Varney? first. But as far as like, uh, Varney I, thought Car- the vampire- I thought Carmilla was before Varney. I, I could be wrong, but. So when does your book on lesbian vampires come out? <laughs> See, there you go. You got to make like a, we have to make a film, a lesbian vampire movie. Because they don't oh, make them damn anymore. It. They did make Lesbian I mean, Vampire sure. Killers, a it- movie that was retitled Vampire Killers when it came out here in the States like three years ago. And I'm like, because the lesbian was going to throw people yeah. off. Well, well, yeah, apparently not. It's, yeah. it's funny people though. It's like to decrease sales of those tickets. Yeah. <laughs> the reason I like, I hate lesbian vampire movies is because they work on me, right? Because uh, to me, a vampire is actually a representation of of the foreigner, right? He's the the exotic foreigner. Like, you know, you're just a dude with your woman, this fucking fancy guy that comes in and he talks like these. And he like, you know, he has these weird ways about him. You know, she gets attracted to the foreigner, right? That's what the symbolism of a, of a, of a Dracula. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Dracula. So I, it's Fright Night. So that's like why le, that's why lesbian movies work the same way on me because it's like a fucking woman knows a woman's body way more than you will ever know a woman's body. <laughs> so when she's able to like take your woman, it's like hey, hey, she'll know more about a woman than you will ever know about being a woman. That's a fucking threat. Well, to our fucking manhood. But that's what's I interesting like then. So these, so basically, the, <laughs> but I don't like those movies. The lesbian <laughs> vampire movie are made. They're made for men, not women, because it's it's exploiting a an insecurity that men have. But we, for some reason, we are also attracted to, right? We're attracted well, to that. You, there's, well, the promise there's two of, beautiful things yeah, on two screen, two beautiful like women naked things. and making out. Yeah, where was that? But at the same time, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, <laughs> what, was that? what did you promise me? <laughs> That well, again, I, I appreciate how tasteful. It yeah, again, that's why I like the movie because it, it subverts your expectations. It really does. Again. At every, it's at sexy. Every turn, it really does. It's yeah. a really it sexy really movie. There's even fangs but in it's the not title. like porno- it's not pornographic. <laughs> it's sexy but not pornographic. Yes. I like how they handle it in this movie. It I'm is. Always I was railing surprised on because, sexuality and because cinema. everything that I've. Uh, everything that's come from you, not to just pin this on you, but <laughs> you fucking pervert. <laughs> you fucking. <laughs> but I mean, but my, my experience is when with this is there's you shit ton more nudity, and you know it is it is lesbian vampires, and like you said, it does subvert your expectations at every turn. Like mm. there was nothing what I expected was in this movie. Yeah. But again, I, I appreciate it. Like, I liked it. Yeah, well, you just wanted more naked, wrap up? naked women like uh, yep. groping each other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, you know, I was. <clears throat> it was after that I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know, because we know that Ilona and the Countess are in a, a relationship, and we see Ilona naked in the Countess's presence, but we never actually see them having sex. But see, the thing it's is, implied, I never, that, right? That and I never because maybe it's not well, sexual. See, maybe never, it's a way of somebody saying she's she's. Uh, it's the slave thing. No, I, not it's not even the slave thing. She's uh, what's the fucking word I'm looking for? She's submissive. exposed oh. to her. She's at her weakest. To uh, her, right. she's naked. She's watching this up. movie. Same thing with when Valerie gets bitten. She's naked. She's exposed. She's at her most fragile. Watching this know? movie, I never um, got the lesbian vibe. What? Really? No, I didn't. No, I I didn't because it. I don't think this portrays them as technically being lesbians. I I I get the whole she's she's the countess, she's the master, and she has her slave. The lesbian thing like never came into it for me. Like really, that, yeah, it it really didn't. Like because I they they like, never, come over here, Lona. Yeah, she's like yeah. I mean, she's, yeah. you're I, no, jealous, I, I, you know, no, like I imagine, oh, but that no, is like no, the vampire imagine, charm, right? It is. Not and even... I imagine it more as the you know the the attention is paid. To the slave and everything, but I don't imagine it as a sexual relationship. That never came across to me. Okay, I'm sorry. Once again, the fucking the 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 quote unquote mother that guy when when the servant took the phone to that guy, he pet his head. <laughs> well, he was a well. gay vampire. <laughs> what? I get gay. Where's the vampire? He pet his head. I don't know. The what? same thing. 
Like disturbing. you said, Alona, or whatever the fuck her name is, Elona. Elona. I don't know. She laid her head on the lap. Oh, I, it's just what I'm getting. I the mean, vampire. He had a vampire. Necessarily, the vampire is not necessarily there, but the gays. I tell you. Well, I think it was there to trick you. That think. Like I said, I think you were supposed to think he was part of some vampire like. I mean, that was my thing or something like that. That was my I thought swear. at the beginning. I swear. I, I mean, I don't necessarily want to go back to it, yeah. but, but I'm just, <laughs> I just wanted to reiterate that it's like right. he pet his fucking servant's head. Well, now hold on. If Stefan wanted out of this whole, you know, masochistic dealio. I don't think he wants out. Yeah, because, well, as, he, his he wants money, to explore it. His money and his title and all that comes from that. But was Lord mean, Jilton or whatever. The fact I mean, that, but okay. Have, but, I mean, he went out and got a wife, right? Mm-hmm. Well, like, he may have come across... I mean, I imagine... I put a backstory into this where he... There's an argument <laughs> between, <laughs> but, well, between him and the father, mother, as we were. There was an argument. And, like, he refuses that whole lifestyle and everything. But was that a like, lie go, to her? I'm go out on my own right? and, and so, figure this out. And I want something different. But he really... Deep down, he really doesn't. But like, at, what at some point... off is... Okay, well, yeah, but, I mean, in more realistic terms, like, at some point, is he dependent on this guy? Because, like you yeah, said, that's where he gets his money and his yeah. title. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, so. that's why he goes back to it. Yeah. I mean, cause otherwise, he would just stay away, and there wouldn't be a thing about it, but right. he goes back to it, so he has to be dependent. And, like you say, why not call your real mother? <laughs> Actually, that's kind of interesting, then, because, I mean, then you, I guess we're, now I'm looking at the whole movie as a bunch of, you know, uh not even codependent. Well, I guess it is kind of codependent relationships where you have like everyone's dependent on, you know, uh, and slave to the person who, you know, dominates their world or whatever, you know. Well, because in every yeah. relationship, there's right. a dominant. Everyone. Right. And there's, there's uh, two there's... people in a relationship. One of those people loves the other one way more than the other person loves the other one. That's just a fact. There's two refusals yeah. in this. Like, there's Stefan refusing the refusal of his mother-father figure, and there's uh, 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 Alona um, mm. refusing the Countess. Yep. Like, you get that in both. And there's the power struggle, then, between Stefan and the Countess over who has, you know, dominance over Valerie. <sighs> yeah, 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 this is pretty deep. good. <laughs> Yeah, I wish the yeah. movie was this good. Deep. I think Man, the movie is this good. It's right? half that it's, good. Right. I know. My my <laughs> my standard go to is to is to think that movies um made like this back in the day aren't as smart as like I don't want to give them any credit. I really don't. Like I don't want to think that this is what they were planning the entire time making the movie. But I'm finding out more and more, like, stuff like this, like, it, it has to be. It can't be coincidence. Right, yeah. Like, this is the message they're trying to get across. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's like, that, yeah. my, before watching all this stuff, my, it was just like, nah, they just made a movie and this is what we got. And this is the message we're putting in afterwards. I'm finding out later. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's a lot of thought. Not, well, I mean, even the way that this movie is shot it. and put together, I'm like, I'm actually, you know, I mean, I've, I've seen it more than you guys have. So I'm like picking up on stuff where I'm like, wow, that's actually like really well put together. There's a scene where uh, Steph and Valerie are in Bruges on a boat going down the, the canal, canal yeah, yeah, yeah. and the camera is following them from the bank and then it like tilts up as it goes over the bridge and you see the bicycle guy. The inspector. Chiching, he goes over. Then the camera pans back down and reveals the girls. That. All right, the girls. Uh, Stefan and and, uh, and Valerie. And then the police car comes by and then there's that scene where you actually see, because I was watching, because I knew that the inspector is going to be like a character in this. Inspector. But he, they, you know, they're following his action, too, that you don't even notice. Yeah. I but he, they are, like, following his action, riding the bike in and coming oh. up to the thing. And I'm yeah. like, huh, they knew what they were doing. I mean, right. this wasn't an accident. There was, like, this was all planned and edited in a way that you got the this guy coming in at the same time that they do into that uh, that scene. Yeah. And replayability, like I want to see this movie again. Plus, I like those little artistic, like everything fades to red. It's a vampire movie, yeah, so I instead like of fading so to black, it yeah. fades oh, yeah. to red. That was yeah. cool. And the wardrobes in this, the use of right. red in the, the wardrobes red. is great. Yes. That's fantastic. I think this movie could be edited, oh, that's planned. for sure. Oh, I agree. <laughs> like, this movie could be 88 minutes. This is 102, you said? Oh, this movie Like, can, she dresses in it's white to minutes. make herself it's almost, like, less threatening when she goes out to meet her at the train yeah. station. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, she's wearing white. Yeah. Right. Same she's thing like, like 
Mallory yeah. puts white on to fucking go, oh, I'm innocent. I'm not this right. dirty girl what, that I was in that room, that's what you the know? Is doing. She's just trying to draw her in so she's going in a less. I just love her voice. Attire, she's just always like, get her. Yeah. where did the Valerie go, go? You know, she's just so soft. <laughs> like, uh, how did the guy fucking way over there hear her? <laughs> <laughs> I like to see a vampire run. I, that's why I like, I don't know, this, I love this vampire. She's awesome in this movie. She's fucking yeah. awesome. The way she she'll throw herself at a doorway and just kind of drape just, herself, yeah, on all shit. very dramatic. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, nobody's watching. Well, I want to say like in some of the reviews that I read, they compare her to like was she doing like a Marlena Diedrich impression? But I'm I am not familiar with yeah any uh, of, what. I know that Madonna know has. Name. I mean, I know who Mar- Marlena Diedrich right. is. I mean, I can yeah. pick her out of a line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I've seen pictures. Who is but she? She's a. <laughs> At move Hollywood or well, no, she, she Hollywood? She's an actress. She's an actress well, from like the 30s or 40s. Or anything? Star she, with anything? enough that I know. I know like, the name. She yeah. was. She was like uh, one of these people who. Audiences a clue. Well, no, because I, I can't off the top of my head remember well, the films that she's in. Work. But she's like <laughs> she's somebody that that is well, always referred to as being <laughs> like the epitome of Hollywood glamour or uh, style. Back in that. Yeah, back, back in that day, day. she was day. like, ooh, you know, she's ooh, really yeah. beautiful and, you know, uh-huh. can, like uh, can wear one of them big ass hats and very nice <laughs> big, ass hats. Yeah. big ass hat or the veil or whatever, you know, so that's why I think the disco ball. But I don't know if, you know, I've heard the comparisons with Delphine Searig's performance in this and Marlena Dietrich, but I can't vouch for that myself. Hmm. Well, I mean, they're, yeah, their use of the Vaseline filter, star filter, whatever you want to call it, like specifically on her is definitely a throwback to the 20s it's and awesome. 30s for sure. It's got to be. I mean, look at when it's Sushi steps little out little of her car. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. She yeah. is like in a beautiful there. movie. Yeah. When she's on screen, it is beautiful looking. Yeah. And then like it oh, the cuts and it's like, oh shit, it's the 70s. Chains. And she's got this veil on. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's very mysterious. You're it looking at awesome. her, but you can't see You can see a little glint in her eye. Oh, fuck. It was, that was an awesome song. Mm-hmm. Shot. Yeah. Did you say awesome sauce? I said That's awesome. Sauce. I said that was an awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. <laughs> and then I corrected myself by saying shot. shot. Uh, <laughs> that was I, awesome sauce. I do, I do say awesome. Yeah. Sauce. So I mean, sauce. I think it's it's low it's budget awesome to be sauce. sure. Yeah. You know, uh, and yeah. made in 1971, and probably much. not made by people who were. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm saying that they are craftsmen and they do know how to make films, but they're maybe not there terribly wasn't, proficient at it. There so wasn't that like outside lighting thing. Yeah, <laughs> they just well, they have that back. Then. That day for night. Yeah, that was their it's very blue. outdoor. So yeah. I think it's it's very well made from that point of view. You know, yeah. like these aren't like maybe you know guys who do this every single day making this movie. You know, like studio craftsmen. You know, but Probably then good I think porno it's like, directors. <clears throat> <laughs> Probably <laughs> had the red They're light art films. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They sure are. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, they don't have they don't have like action sequences down. No, no. Yeah. That's yeah, where right. Yeah, that's yeah, where he sure. stumbles. I think yeah. is in the action. The two action yeah. scenes. We'll cut it together. All right. Well, yeah. what's your second? Your second yeah. action scene. Now that we're here, yeah. yeah. The the second action scene is there's like this. Yeah, what is? It's like a almost like a crystal. Oh God! Yeah. Dome that you would put over a plate. Uh, you know, like when you're presenting food. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, we would set up this scene though. It's what's like happening? So. Jar. Yeah. What the so, fuck is happening? At this well, uh, this movie has four endings. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's got it's got too many. Oh yeah. It goes on forever. Yeah, you're always like, oh my god, it's gonna end. Oh no, 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 no! Again, she's lighting candles. They're gonna have. <laughs> they're, they're gonna talk about something. <laughs> well, you're saying that because like they had an opportunity once. Because basically, you're like, at some point, the countess is going to get her hooks into Valerie, and Valerie's gonna go with the countess. Or Stephen's and they're gonna, have gonna to... fucking like retch her from the countess, and they're gonna like stab right. her. Yeah, in the but heart it's a horror movie, like right. so like it's gonna turn out badly for Stephanie. Right, and there's opportunities no. to end it at like, certain. Right, that's I think where, where you're one. saying like there should be like this is where it should kind of close because they're trying to get yeah. rid of when they, when they bury body. yeah burying Alona that's right. the logical the they, they they says that he goes in they bury him and they, yeah you know, the inspector's yeah. looking right at him he's like I see you burying the body. Yeah. And then they do nothing they with it. They run him off the road. But, but why? I'm going to turn around now. Like, yeah, he's just he's so pedaling sad. back to town. But wouldn't he have a gun? He uh, should have a get car. Get a car. Get a car, Yeah, get dude. a car. You're on a bike. Yeah, I know you're retired, but get a bike. Or well, get a car. It's Europe. <laughs> yeah, right. It's yeah. Europe. Yeah, the yeah. bike thing fits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she runs him off the road, and he never gets to report it. 
He's but, still oh, alive somewhere. He's still. But you can still bury he's Stefan still with uh, with oh. Alona's yeah, she body. Wanted, well, I, maybe she wanted Stefan to be okay with it. Maybe she wanted like a threesome vampire. No, no, no. I, I, well, yeah, I don't know. She what back and then he tries to like. But look what to, like, happens there. Together. Like they they dig a hole. They put Alona in it, or they put St- Stefan's digging the hole. They throw Alona on top of him. The place caves in on him, and so his hand reaches up. You know, like uh, in a horror movie. Again, this right. is another image yeah, that's from Yeah, you know, and the Countess is basically just kind of standing there. It's Valerie who, at this point, is not 100 percent under the Countess's sway because she hasn't been bitten yet. That right. happens when they get back to the hotel. So Valerie is trying to get Stefan out. So I think the Countess so was kind of like, like he... "God damn it! There was a yeah. perfect." No, come away. Come away. You could have just left him. We could have right. got rid of them both and been out the door. <clears throat> As a writer director, around. you could have been like, okay, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll speed this <laughs> right. up. Right, exactly. We'll take care of it right here. But so, do you think the Countess in, in the story of the movie, the Countess keeps stepping around to. In the story. To keep, <laughs> with the, still, the still <laughs> reason he's still there is whatever the story's going on. Cause. But here's the thing I mean, if you, if you stop before you get to that point where she keeps him around. He gets buried. They're up on the hill in the, you know, like the silhouetted moonlight. And she got the cape. The and she cape does, comes out. She does the fucking cape. I love her cape. You, you cut I to black right there, and I'm going to see Daughters the, of Darkness Part 2. Fade to red. I, I'm the like, first. No, yeah, fade to red. Like, yeah. There are opportunities where, like, that yeah, can happen. Dude, that movie like, should have ended a few times. 88 minutes. Because I could edit this movie down to 88 minutes <laughs> and, and it, it would still be a great fucking he's movie. He's right. It could be. <laughs> and they get to an ending that kind of... I kind of like... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, Before no. we get there, we have to hear about the crystal bolt. Oh, yeah. So hold on. Oh, yeah. Like, hold yeah. On. How the yeah. fuck did we even get right, off of that? Don't forget my thought right. on the ending. Right. The wait. ending. Okay, well... So you set it up, Colin, because you know it. Well, uh, they get back to the hotel. Valerie falls under the sway of the Countess, and she invites Stefan over for dinner. Because he's like, fuck it, I'm leaving. I'm taking this woman with me. I'm a man. I'm a man. And they get into this uh, struggle that uh, ends badly for Stefan. But in a almost comical, I mean, it's not. Weird comical way. It's not entirely staged well. And it's not even, it doesn't even make sense. thought out as to why. It's it's almost like can you dispose. can you suffocate somebody with a crystal no, ball? You can't. <laughs> you, can't. you can't. There's no you way. Can't. So and, I mean, how does this happen again? How does the food so, follow? Okay, I can't the, remember. I, how... I got I got this. The countess she does a hip check to the like it's the room service tray like the car. Oh yeah, in her vampire power, yeah. it, like pushes it, 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 it slowly, right, she pushes slowly well, rolls over and then falls special over. Effects. Yeah, but then like you see, so you see like lobster and all this food fall <laughs> and like this, what a waste. This crystal topper to the plate, whatever. And you, you're like wondering, what is she doing with this, right? What's the plan here? There's so, no plan. It's yeah. all improvised. And is, I just can't remember is it the countess she that wanted to yeah, kill? Yeah, she picks up, she picked, well, the because... Countess. she wanted, well, she wanted Valerie to kiss him, whatever. He wouldn't have it. And, and he's then all Stephen's like, like she's Stephen coming, starts, oh, she's coming with me. He starts hitting her. Yes. Oh, that's starts, right, that's right. She starts hitting the fuck out of Valerie. She's like, yeah, Elizabeth, right? Elizabeth. So Elizabeth jumps in there to protect that's right. her and she, new girlfriend. She gets, no, she gets knocked to the window, <laughs> stumbles 20 feet... <laughs> Sean's stumbling right now. Twenty feet. Twenty feet away. Twenty feet. 20 come back. Feet, come back. Almost twenty feet to the window, and then goes back and pushes the food cart yeah. over to stop what's going on. Yeah. But then she okay. picks up the crystal, uh, <laughs> the crystal bowl, and you're like, "Well, she's gonna fucking brain him." <laughs> right. Yeah. You would think because it's got like a point on the top right. of it. At the Plus, top it's of the a bowl. fucking crystal. This is crystal. Topper, yeah. It looks thick. thick. Yeah. Yeah. Thick and heavy. But no. Nope. She decides <laughs> to try and smother him. <laughs> I'm gonna try to smother. I'm gonna put this over your face somehow. Very, very gently over. Yeah, face. like okay, where's her vampire fucking powers then? I don't she get right. that. She has no vampire powers. Well, She's crazy. Know, She's never a food sh- cart. She's never shown like, vampire powers you in the whole movie. But so then both yeah, Valerie and, and the Countess <laughs> are leaning on this thing, trying yeah, to smother. Yeah, because Valerie wants to fucking kill her husband. That's so weird. Well, he's been he's the just, just But why would they do that? The fucking cl- two scenes before. Well, <laughs> she should have got bit. She should have got bit before that. Right? Yeah, you're right. That's why. God damn it. But the. The the, oh, the staging of this is kind of funny because the it's so uh, weird. They're both got a hand on it, and the crystal you hear it. Oh, what the and fuck? It cracks, it falls. So it's supposed open. to crack on his face. Is that what yeah, they pushed it, it down it, yeah, so yeah, hard it cracks yeah, on, his crack face. on his face? Yeah. Yeah. we could have used like a face smush on the ball yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. Like I, 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 I mean, over and the point goes into. His, like, I thought head. it was gonna crack and like you'd see the like blood like fill right. the inside of the. Yeah, they would just crush him. Bowl, yeah. But no, it breaks the thing in half and the. 
the two sides individual tumbled down sides. to his arms and slit his and wrists. wrists. On their own accord. Like yeah, nobody's they, oh, <laughs> very pushing much so. it. Yeah. yeah, and then they're like, blood, blood, blood. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like this. You should see blood. If you're a vampire, you should see blood. You go, blood, blood. I like that. That's a, that's a good direction. To it's taken. So, that's almost a zombie version. Of, it's like a like warning. Oh yeah. When, they, when they see blood, they lose all control. I, I like that. And they're just like blood. I'm writing that down for later. No, yeah. well, because who did that? Who someone did, someone did somebody that? do that? Where that? Well, not the blood, blood. But so, <laughs> somebody did that. Where when they see like blood, that. they're just like. <laughs> like get away from me <laughs> I can't even look at it I'm gonna monster out well I know. thought I thought that's what was going on when he cut himself when Stefan cut himself with the razor I thought he saw the blood and became like retard vampires <laughs> retard. <laughs> right early on in the movie that's what opposite yeah. vampire <laughs> yeah. I saw blood <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was a very weird choice to uh, do the yeah. bowl rolling down and well, that's cutting. What I'm like, what are they doing? Up. Are they trying to like crucify him? Is that like there's some kind of like? But I'm like, what is it? <laughs> Stefan was crucified. It's like they, it's like they like, didn't want fangs, but they didn't want to show him cut it. They didn't want to. It's like yeah. they still well, wanted. Martin the was able to thing. do that without you know yeah, no fangs. I Martin, guess so. but how would have they done Martin. it? Just with a knife or something? They should have fucking did it earlier. Yeah. It should have just been the facials, you know, just. Something. The they should have that even thing. done the face thing. They yeah. should have like pushed Couldn't him end through with the two window. Vampires like, drinking your blood. Yeah. If they would have pushed him through the window, it would have been better. Just pushed him through the fucking window. Mm. He could have been all cut up. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But they have to take him out and dispose of his body, yeah, and then that the body. Uh, takes them past the time when they should have. Be it back. takes us past the running time. That <laughs> which is stupid because no one's around anyway. They could have waited another day. They're like, eh, we're cutting a little close. We might as well dispose of the body tomorrow night. Yeah, so there's fucking 50 rooms in here. Pierre's not right, going to yeah. fucking come yeah, in. You're right. Yeah, is he cleaning everyone you know, else yeah. himself? He's moving the fucking tree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's just moving the tree he's around. He's way into this movie. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's some tree. fucking weird symbolism. I don't know. What about, <laughs> the, what about the disturbance, though, from the fight in the hotel room? He's going to come check that out, right? He didn't hear it. He didn't hear it. How he's down to hotel room. Yeah, he's How would that. you hear that? He's, That's true. He's ironing at this, this point. Yeah, or something. He's got porn down yeah. there. Uh, yeah. They're probably watching soccer or football, whatever you call it. <laughs> and then this poor countess who's been around for hundreds of years dies in an auto accident. Oh, car accident. Oh, 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 we're, well, we're, are we there? We're, no, we're not there. So where are you at? We're, we're back. Okay. And then we're going to go forward. What? So wait, all right, the body, they dump the body it's over the over balcony, the, yeah. balcony, and then they go and bury it, Yeah. and at that point, they drive no, away. No, they, they yeah. throw it in water. They throw it in, like, some pond somewhere. Yeah. Oh, right. Throw it in water, which you could tell it was, like, a very miniature. Just it had to have been a miniature. They threw it into a little fucking <laughs> pool. Very easy. It was yeah. just, yeah. But then they're driving and faster, they got, they're, faster. Right, they're they're don't let the sun The sun's me. coming. They're doing their getaway, because the sun's coming. The sun's coming. Faster, faster, faster. It was very sexual. Faster. Well, they, yeah, There's not they, a sexual in the end. In the end, and they, that scene. and they start making out, don't they? From no. the back seat to the front seat, don't they? Like, yeah, I'm trying. I like the way that Travis's <laughs> imagination is like, so yes. inflamed with the. I like no, yeah. that's, that's why. I, that's no, why I'm so, <laughs> she, I think she was maybe there was some hair caressing. I'm right. telling you, there's <laughs> definitely <laughs> some. I was like, what is going yeah, on here? It was the faster. You should be driving, not getting sexually aroused by her telling you to drive faster. And then, and then at that point. Because we everything we were expecting has not happened. The thing that we were probably expecting I earlier saw on in the movie, I saw that coming. Happens, and this they they crash off the road, and the countess gets thrown from the car and impaled on a huge branch that's just right there on the side, of the road. which is awesome. I'm I going like to that. argue the angle of impalement versus the car. Oh, but that's of just course. Nitpicking. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. You but, had to see the car burn, which they could have just put. the Car. Yeah, then the yeah, car so. the car explodes, right? Explodes. And then catches fire and burns the. Oh, <laughs> burns the it's like Jesus Christ! Right? Yeah, I was like, holy <laughs> shit! But it almost felt like the end of Lost Boys, even though, you know. I just like that idea that a vampire can die. Well, oh, shit! I remember uh, Dracula eighty nineteen seventy four four seventy two two. I like how the wagon wheel or the the stagecoach crashes yeah. and he gets impaled on the fucking wagon yeah, yeah, wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I, I I just kind of like like accidental impalement. Yeah. Ah, you know. But this is very abrupt when this happens, very and abrupt. it's like it's not yeah. abrupt. I'm like, dude, drive faster, drive faster. Yeah, but it was like a fucking well, like right. bad propaganda, as, like as high, like education movie, driving film. Abrupt. Drive faster. Yeah. Because drive nothing, nothing bad can happen abrupt. if we well, drive so fast. And maybe the other thing too is because it's so excessive. I would say. It's excessive. Yeah, 
because she's impaled, car blows up, and she catches on fire. Right. It's out of tone with, and not that I, oh, it's not on. that I don't like it, right, not but it is not, out yes. of tone with the like kind of subtle, you know, kind it's of shocking. Yeah, it, yes. it's shocking. shocking. It works. They want you to be like, oh fuck. <laughs> Even the way they film it, because like you see them in cars earlier, but the way that they like represent driving is they take the camera and they move it in and oh, out right almost right. like a zoom in and out only on the windshield yeah so you're, you're like then this is like actual footage of a car like speeding down this you know wooded highway i like that because once again like you don't expect the vampire to die in a car accident like a normal way right. yeah just like everything else in this movie is kind of a normal human way of things like mundane life takes over and they die in a car yeah, yeah. i thought that was kind of cool I, 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 again, cool. I, again abrupt but i didn't like i did not like it yeah. But then the M. Night Shyamalan ending. Yeah, so this is where it should... See, I would have been happy right. if it ended right there. I yeah. like this ending. Uh, but then there's another ending. There's ending. different ways they could have done this. three is pretty good. All they had to do... Right. All they had to do was kill Stefan at the fucking beach, and this movie would have been better. And you couldn't... Oh, then have the impalement on the way back. Well, but you yeah, wouldn't have had the... the impalement but on the the, you would miss right, the power struggle. The reason that they kept it going... They could have done it at the beach, or they could have done it... Yeah, you're right. they could have done it. They could have had that yeah. discussion at the beach. For sure, dude. Okay. All right. 88 minutes. Travis has got it. It could have been like, I'm yeah. going to edit this movie. Like, I'm going to get an editing bay, download this whole thing, and I will have a better version. Uh, <laughs> the American version. 87 minutes. Uh, <laughs> big fucking American flag. Yeah, just like a goddamn good vampire movie should be. 87 minutes. <laughs> and the, the show up in a black cape, bite a neck, get impaled, and a fucking movie. Real credits. Eighty-seven There's minutes. A shiny, bespectacled black cape in this movie. It's just it's okay. So, so my M Night Shyamalan ending that I right. do love. I love it because I was first like, why the fuck? Why? Wow, okay, we're not gonna see Valerie burning in the car. Hoo-hoo. There you go. Valerie did not burn in the car. Four months later. Four months later, she ends up with a young couple at some other hotel. Some other resort. hotel in fucking uh, Elizabeth in a uh, ba- Battery's fucking whatever they call her, Batten. Battery. But they didn't call her that. They called her Batory. Batory. Yeah, Batory or whatever. It's the Batory. She's she's wearing her sequins cape. And she's use she's speaking in her voice. So it's yeah. Valerie's body speaking in her voice. So I'm like, dude. Yeah. So what we thought was a Renfield relationship, like where I'm your slave, I'm your like whatever. What actually turned out to be is this vampire has kind of like a backdoor body solution this is to your where interpretation yeah, I think yeah. But I kind of because I don't like, know if this is what they meant. I don't because know it almost you seemed know, to me. That the choice to maybe dub her, her voice in was like an afterthought. Like, oh, you know She's what? She's wearing her cape. It's her voice. It yeah, has right. to it's be It's like her, her soul. personality. It's her soul inside yeah. her body. She just uses, like, in this world, you're either your vampire, like, because we don't know if they're vampires or if they're Renfield, like, zombie type characters. Yeah. I mean, like we the evil things affect. She like has a reflection, blood. right? I mean, yeah. they didn't Except ever for her fucking fingers. Which, no, well, the other girl. Well, ba- right. yeah, the other girl, the Renfield girl, Lenore, L- Alona, or whatever her fuck her name is, <laughs> Ilona, <laughs> Ilona, and Ilona, whatever. Yeah, so that's why it's like I don't think they were vampires. They were kind of Renfield, but in this world, Renfields are used like as a secondary body. Like if you die, your vampire soul will go to your. They're a Horcrux. Dun, dun, dun. Oh what? The hard thing. Nothing, say, yeah. nothing. Just skip it. <laughs> skip it. It's the Harry Potter. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's like a receptacle of the. It's a reliquary, it's a, except for your soul. To go into it. All right. Well, yeah. But they say. It. So, but, it's, but it's basically. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not like it's not beneficial. It's the same. It's the right. same deal that you can put really a is. you can put a soul part, into yes. something it else that you can. It is your backup hard drive. Yeah. Like yeah. If your shit fails, you can just. Which is cool. I thought that was a cool way to explain a vampire. You know, I'll take it. Yeah. Like that's perfectly fine. I, I would definitely buy that. One. I would buy into that definitely. Yeah, because yeah. just because yeah. that, just because Pierre said I saw you forty years ago, that does not mean that is the body has, of right. Elizabeth Bathory. It just means she that's a different body, and she's always looking at like, oh, look at her skin. Oh, it's so pale. She is always looking for the body type she wants to inhabit. But then wouldn't well, Alona done, at some point have but been? She died uh, though. Well, she was that, but she wants to leave, right? She wants to get out of there. She, but I also got the Elizabeth. She's like arranging her secondary body. Plus, why not have three or four bodies around? Yeah, they I didn't guess, necessarily just say because, like no, it feels because like, like her. Yeah, because Elizabeth. We know that the the woman who shows up 
in 1971 is the same one who visited 40 same years but earlier. But she hasn't same died one. yet. She, but she hasn't aged either. She's not going to die. You're not supposed... It's not about... So Obviously, like she does die, die. You get impaled. Well, yeah, yeah. But, but that's all I'm just saying. That's the secondary body. You got to keep it around at, in case. You but don't... she's looking at, like, eternal life. I mean, I get, I see what you're saying. But but they keep them young, too. When they... The Renfields also have the young thing, right. too. Right, not, not Not in, like, the Dracula world. In this world. In this yeah. world, her Renfield vampire counterparts or whomever she makes... Her what you what what would you call it? She is her like what was Dracula's fucking women? Those three women, the brides, the brides. Yeah. What do yeah. they call the brides? The brides of Dracula. Anyway, so it's the same difference, you know, where they stay young forever too, right. because when she dies, she's just gonna whoop go right into there, and if they and left, that's eternal, they would die. Yeah. Like, that's why there's a conversation in the middle of the movie that says, you can't leave. Well, they no, could also leave. explain why when Valerie gets you bitten, she falls me. under some, like a spell, like a trance. Yeah, she's where it doesn't It doesn't seem like Alona is under the same trance, but Valerie, once uh, the but countess But she said, in time her, you will love me the way I love you. <clears throat> she said that. In time you will love me the way I love you. Uh, yeah. Battery said that to, to Valerie uh, after the train station. Yeah. She, she's like, in time you will love me the way... I love you. Same thing with whatever. It takes time to... It's almost just like let the right one in, right? You got to get the person like infatuated with you so they want to help you as a vampire your whole life. Yeah. Mm. All right. So is that uh, Daughters of Darkness? Wrapping it up. Daughters of Darkness. Wrapping it up. Wrapping it up. I believe that would start with me, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, more and more that we do these podcasts, I think about how, man... I wish we would have done this before, I, or like had a conversation like this before I saw the movie, because like everything is so much more clearer. You know, it's like going into this film, you don't know what the fuck is going on for. I would say it's what is it, hundred minutes for about mm, fifty, at least fifty minutes in, right? Halfway in, you don't, you're an hour in, you don't know what's going on, and they're like building all these things, like Travis says, yeah, they got all these mysteries like, throughout throughout the film. You're you're waiting for like. <laughs> At least one mystery to be solved, <laughs> and, and they—I mean, they do. They, they after that, they do start to you start to figure some stuff oh, that's out. That's interesting. Oh, you're going to ignore that? Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh okay. but oh. yeah, I, I still, you know, I mean, it is interesting how uh, it, it, it re, this film reinforces the idea of if you have a, a great concept for a film and writing, you know, like you have a really good story, like budget doesn't really matter because you can go back and watch this film over and over again and you're going to find out like oh like that's what they were like you know I mean that's I guess the next time I watch it I'm going to take this conversation that we just had with me and I'm going to be like oh well yeah that's exactly what we were talking about and there it is you know the proof in the movie the proof is in the pudding as they say and when you go back and watch it like I think that's all going to be present and I think that's what makes a good film um I don't think like they just you know they didn't take like even though it, it it's no it's not even it's not even a exploitation film really because they're not relying on the idea of lesbian vampires or vampires really because they're exploring new avenues to all of that and the the story that they're actually telling like it doesn't have to be a vampire story you know I mean like what Travis says about with the men and the whole, you know, women's liberation. Yeah, it's definitely right. it like just be a uh, domestic story. About yeah, a couple and it, meeting it could, other people as they're traveling abroad. And the vehicle of vampirism is an interesting way to present it. Vampirism, 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 vampirism. <laughs> vampirism. Um, so for that, I mean, like, my hats off to this Harry Kumel. <laughs> I don't know what, yeah. if he's ever this done Harry else. Kubel. What the fuck's a Harry Kubel? <laughs> <laughs> but my hat's off to him because I mean, he, uh, yeah, like he explored. He he made a, a dynamite movie. I don't know if he's ever done it again, but this this is a good one, and I would definitely recommend it to my friends and it's family. No writer on this movie. I don't really? know about my friends. No, family. there's no writer on this movie. What? So you're recommending it? I totally recommend it. No, yeah. there's no writer on this movie. I'm uh, gonna watch it again. Huh? On the back of the At box. At least on the anyway. back of the box, anyway. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, uh, Daughters of Darkness. That's right. We're doing a show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I was I was surprised by this movie. Um, everything, and uh, I'm glad because everything I was expecting to happen, <clears throat> which you know, if it had happened, I probably would have just been like, oh yeah, it's you know, it's a vampire movie and. 
Uh, but, you know, like we said, it subverted every expectation, which was, you know, I appreciate more than anything that's just going to give me what I expect. Um, I would I would watch it, I would definitely watch it again, maybe a couple more times, just to, you know, um, uh, just to, like you said, you were talking about, you know, they know what they're doing. And like I said, I don't give enough credit to these, to older films in thinking they know what they're doing. I'm just like, oh, they just made a fucking movie, and now, you know, we go back and we give, <laughs> we assign stuff to it, and it's, it's fucking bullshit. These people knew what they were doing, and um, I give it a lot of credit for, for, not doing what would might be expected of a vampire movie. I was very surprised. I like where they went with it. It could have ended in four different places, but um, still very interesting to watch. I like the actors in this movie. Um, I was never I was never bored with watching their performances. I liked them, so I'd watch it again. I definitely I'd recommend it. It's uh, it's one of the better ones. I literally like okay. The only vampire movies I would ever consider owning is Fright Night, Lost Boys, From Dusk Till Dawn, Let the Right One In. Um, I mean, uh, to I me, I, I love so vamp- vampire movies start at 1985. I like vampire, <laughs> well, because I just think I, they're so fucking played out. Like I said, so many vampire movies yes. have the whole... She looks exactly like your long lost and love. And painting and everything. They yeah. just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, man, they that, just yes. like, oh god, you want to talk? Do they? I mean, it just drives me crazy. It's like it, Fright Night does that, by the way. And then, of course, nowadays, <laughs> how, just saying. it does, it does do it that. But, but, well. he, but he it was making, well, yes. but yeah. he was making an homage and to those. Very, yeah. Yeah. And that's probably like the last right. one. It has short. to be the last yeah. one. No, it's not the last one. Fucking Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula did it. <laughs> the yeah, one but, by well, they still did it. Winona well, yeah, fucking that's, writer that's was the, old the story. reincarnated. Uh, but but that's not in the book though. The reincarnated love. I forget where that originally comes uh, it from. It came from the seventy. It comes from a movie. It's the seventy three Dracula with Jack Palance. Is it Jack Palance? Yeah. yeah. Jack Palance. Oh, I want to see that. Dracula. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. oh I want to see that. <laughs> oh, I can't oh, wait to shit. see that. Yeah, I totally he want to looks, see it. He looks. He just looks pained the whole way through. Yeah. <laughs> so, but this is like I was. I was surprised by this movie because I just fucking hate vampire movies. I rail against them. My brother just is so in love with vampire movies. So I've seen a lot of them growing up more than I care to fucking even think about. And I like how this went away from like the gray hair to the black haired slick back guy, uh, black, slick black hair in the in the fucking cape and the the medallion necklace that all the seventies fucking. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, like I think if it wasn't for this actress that played uh, 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 Countess Battery, I mean she fucking made this movie to me. Oh, I loved her. I mean she is the Jerry Dandridge. She is the you know. She is fantastic in this movie, and I think the the main actress that plays uh, uh, the wife, she's a fucking knockout too. She's just a beauty. My God, she's a beauty. Yeah. It'll be Danielle uh, Weemet. I didn't care much for the fucking Sado man. Like I thought they were trying. I don't know if they were just trying to throw you off too much or try. I just didn't care so much for. Because, I mean, they didn't go anywhere with it. They set up this whole, like, husband's got a weird lifestyle that they just fucking just stop exploring. And I don't, I, I just think that's a poor choice. It's like, dude, this was the first half of the movie. You're not going to fucking show us what the fuck's up with him? Amen. That's bullshit. Yeah. Why set it? Why? He just, it's like, they could have done, they might as well just went with my mother doesn't like you. Why create such a fucking convoluted <laughs> thing not to pay it off? Doesn't make any fucking sense. It's confounding when you look back. That's it, dude. When I edit this, I'm editing it out all that convoluted shit. I might edit out the whole sadomasochistic relationship. <laughs> Because it makes no sense in this movie. It tries to. When I edit it. <laughs> I'm going to edit this movie. I want, I want to see my version of this movie. Because I think it's a really good vampire movie, which I don't fucking say I want. Yes. I fucking really dog on vampire movies. I barely give them a chance anymore because either they're too romantic or... Or Or you're supposed to rely on everything you've seen before. Or yeah, or they just whatever. Or they have to rely on like, oh, modern day science. It's a war. It's a street war with a werewolf. You know, I'm fucking sick of that shit. You know, I'm sick of the old vampires. I'm sick of the new vampires. I just want a good enemy for my movie. That's what I want. I want a good bad guy, a good villain. That's all. I don't care if they're fucking bald and white with pointy ears or, or fucking hot women or what. I just want a good bad guy. That's cool. And I just thought this chick was awesome. She steals every scene. The whole fucking movie is her. It's her. 
And I, I the story's simple. I like how simple the story is. It's really just, I mean, fuck, it's people sitting in a hotel room talking about sadomasochistic behavior. <laughs> and it gets them all hot and bothered, you know? That's simple? I think it's pretty <laughs> simple. Apparently, it's simple. It's pretty simple because, because like normal, like if this movie was written with normal people, like Francis would have been like, "What the fuck are you rubbing all over my husband for? Talking oh, yeah, about chopping yeah, yeah. nipples <laughs> off?" But it's not that movie. These people are like, imagine, fucked up imagine in the, head. the Michael Bay version of this, right? The Michael Bay, Bay. really it would be unlikable teenagers. <laughs> it would be all over the world. No, I mean, just like if you were to it, the the <laughs> the character types that he would put in this oh. movie it would just be like. Uh, uh, but I just don't want to get so convoluted if we're not going to really have a uh, a uh, what do you call it if it's not going to pay off thank you, or yeah pay off yeah but still but, but still yeah thank you resolution but still I you know still I like shit I might even own this movie one day just because I Whoa. I liked her so much I thought she was such a fucking cool vampire <laughs> it's like holy fuck man. Like I said, like when they showed her, they were shooting a fucking movie from the twenties. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a nostalgic movie from the twenties. When they showed the rest of the movie, it was like, yeah, it's the seventies. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nothing special. They showed her. It's like, oh god, those are beautiful images. She looks beautiful. Everything she says is awesome. I mean, yeah, I I like this movie a lot. I thought it was really good. Not to say it didn't have its faults. I mean, I'm not even gonna say like I would watch this every you know day of my life or not like that. But it's still like when it comes to like. You know, like this, like slides in at like number, like I don't know, seven on my like. I mean, I don't have. I wouldn't even say I've got a top ten vampire list. No. I don't even know if I can have that many we, vampire movies. I like. Can I put it in like an audio stinger, like number seven, number seven, <laughs> coming in at number seven, <laughs> and coming in at number seven is Diaries of Dartmouth. So, uh, yeah, I like this movie. I can't say it's perfect, but it's one of those like I like it because I like it. I don't, you know, yeah, no. it's not great, you know, <laughs> but fuck it. Well, I'm in the same boat. I mean, I like it because I like it. I, I think it's one of those things. Like, I mean, again, it's one of my favorite. Uh, well, specifically <laughs> of the lesbian vampire <laughs> subgenre of, 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 of the vampire film. <clears throat> Top you know, five lesbian vampires. I think you know. I mean, like, there's other ones that are more uh, exploit. I mean, I do have a soft spot for the vampire lovers. Maybe you know, but. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, like, Gene Rollin did, you know, like, I'm, I'm just not, like, too crazy about some of those. And uh, what was the guy? Jess Franco made, like, with his wife, Linda Romain, they made, like, a fuck ton of, like, Vampiros Lesbos and Lips of Blood and, like, all this stuff. <laughs> and they're really hard to watch. <laughs> and even Lesbos. even though when they came... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah was that movie? Yeah. What, are you what, what does that mean in Spanish? <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> and then Hammer did, like, a whole bunch of them, but all the Hammer ones were basically the Karnstein... Uh, the Carmilla yeah, the Car- Karnstein, yeah. you know, uh, uh, story just kind of redone over and over. Here's the sequel to it or whatever. Um, this one, I think, like, approaches it from the perspective of, like, you know, it's more adult than those movies. Those movies yeah. are always trying to cater to the juvenile in you that wants to see I mean, those are hot, sexploitation. Yeah, you want to see hot Fangs, women naked blood, hot making women. out with, and 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 a bunch of, you know, biting. Like, I blood. think the trailer of this, this is one of those movies where you're like, oh, yeah, man, we're going to go see this dirty sexploitation. What? Yeah. They fooled me with a trailer. <laughs> no, because know? it yeah. sits uncomfortably between yeah. the art house and the grind house. Yeah. It's, it's art yeah, house for sure. in its aspirations, but it ended up playing playing on 42nd street you know i mean that's where it, <laughs> it right? found its yeah. audience yeah so it's kind of like well, just because it is foreign right i mean yeah 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 i think so and be because it was the the thrill of the forbidden you know taboo kind of subjects back Naked in the day girls yeah but on then it, the screen it totally <laughs> subverts all of your expectations it treats it like and I guess that's the thing. Is it a postmodern vampire movie where it's like, we know what vampire movies are. It's Christopher Lee in a cape wandering around with a medallion and, you know, in the fog and all this stuff because it knows that those movies exist because right. it keeps Definitely doing shout outs to those moments, but like doing like, okay, we know that they have capes that, you know, but it does it in a ridiculous way or like a way that calls attention to itself or even the inspector, the vampire hunter. You know, it's like we're gonna get rid of him because, like, right. he's, you know, who this is the Van Helsing in another vampire movie. This would be like the right. guy, yeah. and in this movie, it's like, man, you know, he's kind of an annoyance off the. I don't have time for you. And, you know, she goes, it just brushes him off, which I think is kind of great. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean it's uh it's it's like a grown and, and by the way, there's like screenplay by three people We're- on that box. I'm just saying, Sean. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> That's my bad. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, totally the movie, missing. the movie is owned by, I mean, like when you Those see glasses it. glasses are prescription. They're just, no, they're just from they're the grocery store. The they're, <laughs> they're plastic. They're for show. GQ. But it wasn't down next to producers, so we'll give them uh, the benefit of the doubt. But it's owned by uh, Delphine, Delphine Serig. Uh, and again, haven't seen anything else that she's done, but she towers over yeah. every scene that she's in in this movie. Through this really like sly kittenish, I don't know what she else is you would like twenties movie seductive. starlet, twenties movie starlet. She's just oh yes, yeah. yeah. But you know, uh, it's just like oh I love you. <laughs> she's like it's, it's everything like, in the way she talks. She it's is like the nineteen twenties seductress. You can't be too sexy, yeah, but, but you can. The kind thing of about smile, her that like somehow it, like, I mean all that's true, like, but there's fuck. like this kind of like bored aris aristocratic kind yeah, of, you know, like, sure. she's just kind of like, uh, you know, I've seen we're well, just, she's, kinda, yeah, well, yeah, she's yeah. Free. I shouldn't talk about this, but you know, the, I have this on my mind or whatever. And that's, it's just, she's very compelling. Well, I mean, she, yeah. but she's telling people I'm more free than you. You're a little bit more subdued. She is. Yeah. Really. You know, I, yeah. it, it piques someone's interest to be like, what, what are you talking about? You know, right. oh, I'm yeah. sorry. It's I like a mean. character that will just say those things. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. she's she's really cool to watch, mm-hmm. but I also think that you know uh, I think the other characters are interesting. I mean, you know, I think um, you were saying something in your wrap up, Brent, that uh, about how oh shit, where that it creates all these mysteries. It's like an hour into it, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's because you're compelled because you're watching it. And you're like, this is intriguing. Yeah. These people are interesting. They're intriguing. I don't know where this is going, but I like that about it. You know, when I watch a movie, I don't want to know what the fuck is going to happen. Right. You know, that it, this is predetermined that they're going to do this. I kind of like it where it's like, what in the <laughs> fuck? It, well, yeah, I mean, that's where I think this movie doesn't necessarily stick the landing. I, I actually don't like the final uh, ending on this. Because it's like I, I'm just yeah, I'm maybe just not clear on what's happening. I know Travis interpreted it. I've got. I don't know. I'm pretty good on this. I know it. I don't know if I. Yeah, but even if that's true, I don't know if I like that. I think I would have liked to have it like after she burns. You know, the thing went. You know, but. You know, and I'm not going to hold that against the movie. I still think. Uh, so I would have, I, I would have thought it would suck if she just died, then the credits rolled. I would have been like, "Well, fuck! Everybody just dies." That's how just Jaws sucks. ends, damn it! No, okay. Jaws does not end like that. <laughs> you kill the Sheriff fish Brody and comes back to That's his family. Talk, no, no, don't talk. <laughs> American Werewolf no. in London. They kill him, and then it's over. Well, but, but she's left crying. Okay. You know what? <laughs> you haven't seen that movie, so it's just not. Are you fucking nuts? <laughs> God, Sean's fired. I knew that. Was Sean good. will no longer be featured on the Saturday Night Show or Saturday Night Freak Show. He's just been fired. The official pink paper. Oh boy! <laughs> God oh. damn it! It's only the most. Uh, I'm gonna yell at you. No, it's like the best after, werewolf yeah. movie that's ever been made. Only the most important. It yeah. is the most important oh, fucking after. special effects movie after. ever made. It's right? The, yeah, it's the first one that it created the because this is of that not movie. The movie we're talking. Created I know, but you just fucking opened a can of words. For but anyway, yeah, makeup effects. <laughs> oh god, and one. Um, All right. But yeah, uh, I can't remember where I was going. Sorry. With this. Okay, yeah, so yeah. what do we got? I think it's well made. I think it's well acted. <laughs> I think it's. Uh, would I recommend it to people? Yes, because I think that this is one of those movies where, you know, as far as like Travis was saying, as far as vampire movies go, you've seen so many yeah. things that are very similar. This one strikes out and tries to do something different, and that makes it unique. And I mean, yeah, you're not going to forget that you saw this. And sometimes, <laughs> like later on, you're going to yeah. be going, That's that fucking movie. That, yeah. yes, I will always remember this movie. Sometimes yeah. when people try to do different vampire movies, that fucking goes horrible. Like, yeah. Because yeah. it gets too, like, well, fuck, that's not a vampire. Or, yeah. You know. And just, you have to, it, you do have to go with the grain of salt that it is a product of its time. It's pacing. I think is opinion. yeah it's yep. it's you know at the time that was acceptable now we want things a little faster so I mean you have to adjust to that but I think it still dis- it still delivers a uh, very satisfactory cinematic experience. Whoa, that was, you know what I'm gonna re- I saw the dots in between. I'm gonna those. revert my recommendation. Very- I'm I'm gonna recommend Travis's 87 minute version of this <laughs> film when it comes out. 
I want to see. Dude, I I tell you, I know exactly what scenes to cut. (laughs) (laughs) I'm giving you two years. It's trademarked. uh, All right, so it's Daughters of Darkness. So we all recommended it. That's right, four out of four again. Holy shit! Wow. Good streak. All right, I'm actually surprised by that because this one was kind of iffy. You got to understand going into it, I'm like, I don't know how this one's going to go. Uh, four out of four. I think the discussion t- helped this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think the discussion <laughs> helped this movie. Because right after the movie, it was That's like, no. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> but they gave you a lot to discuss. You yeah, know? right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They gave it to you. There was yeah. some, something to chew on. Because a lot of it times. It is a I'm, meal. It is not yeah. just candy. Yeah, we it just digested it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and now we'll shit it out. <laughs> <laughs> and never talk about it ever again. Yeah. I never had this experience of watching this movie. So next week is Travis's movie pick. What's it going to be? Out of the rust and out of the slime. Everybody knows that he's here for mankind, the Toxic Avenger. <laughs> there you go. It's the Toxic Avenger on sharp as hell Blu-ray, I'm assuming. Yeah, on Blu-ray for the first time ever. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Because even <laughs> DVD copies were like, this is cleaned up, all right? All right. <laughs> sure. If you okay. say so. Heavy grain. <laughs> Blu-ray well, we sharpened like grain. Videotape. Maybe. Maybe they cleaned <laughs> it all up. sharp grain. Yeah, so that's I, next week. I can see the grain very clearly. <laughs> that was yeah, my experience with Young Frankenstein. I was like, whoa, oh, really? that movie is a grainy, grainy movie. Black and white. Oh, there you go. But uh, yeah, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Free Show. And until then, you can find us on your usual uh, podcast hangouts, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and about a dozen Stratus more. We're everywhere. What is it? YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, Castro Cast Radio. Roller, Cast. Player FM. I think even that's wrong. We're <laughs> everywhere. That you want us to be. And places you don't want us to be. Right. And let's not go there, but we're coming there. I think the so podcast that's... is starting to go away. Just full end. We're, we're, we're there. Gonna, wait, we're going to do four endings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, four, okay. Here's the new one. <laughs> this uh, podcast is over. I'll... Actress Delphine Sirig, which again, I'm not familiar with her, but apparently she was in some movie called The Last Days at Marinbad, hmm. Mary, Murray and Bad, hmm. which was an experimental art house kind of thing done in the 60s. It took place in a hotel. So again, the director goes like, hey, we've got a movie in a hotel, Delphine Sirig, and it's got vampires, John Carlin. So it puts it together. He just had but slots yeah, to fill. She slinks through every single scene in this you really movie. Can't look away, like yeah. you like watching her talk and interact with these other characters. Well, she looks like softer than everybody. Everybody looks like there is some seventies movie. The hair's a little like you know, hair's natural, not no product, whatever, whatever. You go to her and there's like a fucking soft glow over her, and she's like this porcelain white almost, and you're like everything she's wearing usually sparkles. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh yeah, it's very yeah. red. Yeah, yeah. She's in the uh, what are we calling it? The um, sequence gun. Yeah, or, but it's like the, the disco, disco ball, ball yeah, dress disco. at one point, which I thought was kind of really cool. <laughs> and she like barely like she like like almost like whispers every line, but like you can hear it clear as day. You know? Yeah, <laughs> and she smiles like constantly, oh, which I think awesome. is part of her like uh, <laughs> yeah. the way that she you know even when she's telling you something that you know. If she's not happy with what you did, there's a big smile on her face. She's like working her vampire charm, like at every moment, yeah. at every moment. Yeah, and I like how her scene starts off, like, like I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they could have done it a lot better, but I do like the concept of of the countess arriving at the hotel and just the bell, the bellhop dude who's like fuck, probably like in his sixties or something. He looks like a right? yeah. Pierre or whatever. Yeah. But he talks about how, like, how when he was a boy, there was a chick that looked exactly like her and said it was the Countess uh, Batney or whatever. And she's like, I couldn't be. I'm that, you know. That's my name. My mother. Yeah, probably. Perhaps. There's a... <laughs> but I, I just like that. I thought that was cool. I like how startled he was. Like, they could have played that off. Like, almost not even, like, had him, like, had her, like, him talk to her right away about it, you know, but still. Right, it was just still kept a, it as a, like, Yeah, intrigue. just something, like, like, why does he look at her like that? What's going on? And then explain it later. Well, which they do like... plenty of, which they don't, like, there's plenty in this movie where they go to a scene, and they leave a mystery, and they don't fucking return to it for the whole movie. And it's just like, <laughs> what was that about? We'll never know. It's on the cutting room floor or something like that. 
Well, I no, like the uh, like what well, you were talking about earlier, the uh, detective, because there is this guy. I mean, he's riding around on a tricycle or yeah, whatever. His bicycle. Yeah. A tricycle. Sorry. It's it is a bicycle. bicycle. <laughs> but he's, you know, he is aware that there are vampire murders or whatever over in Bruges, which is right next door to us then, apparently. And uh, he suspects the Countess because, do you not remember when we met before? We never find out, like, where that Nothing. happened. I mean, no. she well, doesn't I can only admit it was, it was when she was at that hotel again. It couldn't have been 40, 40 years. years ago. Why? That guy well, would have been he, so young. Well, he said he was a kid. Oh, yeah. No, the, Pierre said he was a kid. Well, I thought he did, uh, too. I thought he said something. I thought that dude said something about was his the mother. Madam remember when we met before or something like that. I thought that guy said something about, like, how him and his mother, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember. Nowadays, there'd be a comic book that came out before this movie that would explain <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All these well, they should have fucking like at least one because I thought that scene was awesome. The one thing that this movie has is music, right? And oh, they yeah, just know yeah. when to be like. Yeah, I love the and score. And the guy's like, this. "I know you. Dun, 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 dun. We met before." Dun, dun, dun. You know, yeah. I just, I was like, "Yeah, holy fuck, they, holy shit, he remembers her too." But it's part of like, I guess what I was looking at it as is like his character fills basically the vampire hunter. You know, like because yes. this movie tries to, and this is kind of why I like it. It tries to subvert your expectations of what you're going to get out of a vampire movie. It already knows that you've seen a fuckload of these movies because they were being produced all the time time at this period of time and so it's like you know what we're going to change this up so you can't see it coming so he basically sets up the i know the legend of uh you know uh or i know that there's a you know i'm i'm coming after the vampire i know there's a vampire and then you know he's always like hanging around in the background of shots and you know spying on them and then she kills him apparently again apparently. Not, not not the best executed scene in the world but just by <laughs> running him off the road and it's so it's like oh i thought he was going to be the guy that in the end you know was going to come in and pound the stake into her heart no. but he runs her off the road yeah so you didn't see that coming i think that was the intention of yeah. how they set his character up that you yeah. just see these like left turns in the story it and is. be like huh I didn't tons, see that coming. Tons of left turns well, because maybe, everything I expected from this movie never happened until well, maybe the end. But well, yeah, and with a left turn, you want it to pay off at some point in the movie where a lot of these left turns are dead ends. No they're, payoff. Yeah, because it's like it's almost like if if they if they would have just had a scene between the inspector and the bellhop about that whole situation that would have at least given him one more scene where he's investigating this yeah. fucking vampire woman or whatever yeah, yeah it's very peripheral but i like how she like so she so she was so she shows up with her little like was she french i just want to say she's yeah, french, french. We'll she's, she's like she's wearing that little black french. dress she, she has, has the little haircut. like bobby cut oh god she's hot oh she's a <laughs> she's hot but i don't like when she opens her mouth because that's when her mouth looks really wide I, but that's a thing you gotta watch the movie to get <laughs> but so <laughs> So, so the idea behind this is, I mean, I, like I said, this movie is very like keen at like trying to drag out a mystery where you know the Countess is just like, look at the couple. Right. Oh, they're so beautiful. If you didn't know, it's the vaguest movie in the world. Oh, it is fucking vague. You're like, because you gotta wait. You gotta like, what? what? Well, and also, what does she want from at her? that point. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I was thinking that, and uh, they. I, they, I can't remember if they didn't tell John Carlin or, you know, it's like it was an idea that came up to them like, huh, you know, it would be weird if like that was a, a man. So when John Carlin was shooting the scene, I don't think that he knew that he was, you know, he just thought he was talking to like, you know, his overbearing mother. Right. It was when he saw the movie later, like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> But that was one of those moments in the movie, like where you're like, what in the fuck? And like, and that's like, you can't forget this movie after you've seen that. It's like, this is the one where the guy's mother turns out to be but a dude. It's it a mother. Yeah. That, I mean, even the mother fact does exist. Mother, mother does exist. That is not. I it's don't just, think. It's a I don't think we're arguing that. But no. But mother exists. Like a female mother. Well, she's never mentioned. Right, but she does exist. Are we sure? Well, I mean, yeah, but that he must have been birthed by a female? <laughs> yes. It's like there's another half to the, to the gay vampire yeah, sitting never, in the arboretum. See, I don't know. Are I, you sure Mother actually exists? I thought he, he was talks? being, like, tongue-in-cheek about it, though. Like, tell Mother, because he knows that, like, the I mean, dude can't saying, call like, her tell anything him, else. Tell him that Mother sends her yeah, regards. Yeah, he knows, like, like he's talking about always himself. that? Okay. Yeah, 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 because he's like, are you there alone? You know, he hears that someone's with him. He hears the girl with him. So I think he was just being tongue-in-cheek. I don't think Stephen there is a mother. He's fucked up. See, now that now if you go back oh, well, and look at his behavior before that, I think it's like, so this is a guy who's like, you know, he's, he's trying just, to have normalness yeah, with her. But he has like 
uh, fucking uh, crack running through like yeah. his psyche. But do you think that even I think like maybe even the director told him that he was a vampire in the film because like all of the reactions to you know like the blood and the like that was it's it's reaction to the to the sadomasochism yeah, yeah. like that oh, is the yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. is yeah. his shit. He right like there. cut yeah. his neck shaving. He was like, oh yeah, right. Yeah, 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 <laughs> now yeah. that we talk about oh, it, so looking back on it, all makes yeah, fucking sense. Yeah. When He's the warped. countess starts getting at him, like they're, what they're describing is all the all the shit that the countess would do to the virgins, the, you know, the, just, explicit just the torture, detail. Yeah, torture. Yeah, the explicit detail of the torture. And he's like yeah. wetting his pants at that point. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I thought she saying. was getting off on it too. I thought she was. Well, she well, was too. Well, yeah, because were. she's the blood countess. I like the way right. that in that no, scene. No, 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 no. I thought Valerie, red. the wife. No, she was like, stop it, stop but, it. But, like I said, they kind of, because te- I mean, I'm fucking telling you, when they see that dead body, she's going to give him a hand job on the fucking bus. She is a little fucked up, too. Well, I, she, I, I think she is. Innocent. I think, no, I think, I think she knows so it, what she realized because she talks well, she about She doesn't him. want to dive into it. R- well, yeah, she Once realizes. Once that, like, fucking she, can of worms. She realizes, she sees what he felt when he saw that dead body. Like, that triggered something in him. And she's like, I mean... At that point, for her, that was like the tip of the iceberg. So she's like, you know, going into it. Like, well, yeah, you seem well, to the, like this. Let's see. Yeah, where she, it goes. she wants but to, but make she doesn't know how deep happy. that runs. Yeah. Well, they yeah. try it that night, don't they? That's when he hits her with the belt because he sees no, like he the hits count- her after he calls mother. And I don't think they're trying. Well, that. yeah, I think I'm talking, mean, no, I'm talking. No, I'm talking. No, we're talking her, about yeah. when we're talking about when the countess and uh, when they're explaining the victim, the torture, then. Oh. Valerie's like I thought she was getting into it for a minute but then she like freaks out like we can't do this and she like goes upstairs but then when does he hit her with the belt because she does go through with the sadomasochistic he fucking starts punching the fuck out of her hits her with the belt it's it's directly following the conversation with mother because after the scene where you're talking about where it was yeah because the 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 um the Countess and Stefan have yes. their moment. Valerie leaves, goes upstairs. When he follows her up and the Countess comes up, she's like, I don't want anything from you. Like, just get out oh, of here. You're right. sick. And so he's like, well, maybe tomorrow, madam, you know. And so, and then that night, then she's like, you know, tomorrow, you know, when are you leaving or whatever? And he's like, I'll call, you know, tomorrow morning, I'll call mother. And then it cuts to the morning. She calls mother. And then after that, he stands is up when, and you see him make yeah, he fist. makes a fist and he's like, get over here and starts beating her with a belt. So it's like, whoa, what? So he beats his wife. Yeah, but, yeah. but they, were, try, but they were trying a sexual thing. It wasn't beating the wife. They were trying something sexual because that's when, when she leaves in the I don't morning. I she knew at that point. No, oh, she is was, that the one where she, like, he flips away she, from her and the countess and Ilona are out the window looking at them. Because there's one time when, that like, was later. That no, was that later. was separate. Oh, okay. Because, okay, when she, because she wakes up in the morning, she's got the fucking belt welts all over her, mm-hmm. right? She yeah. gets dressed. She fucking leaves. She's going to get a train and get the fuck out yes. of there. The countess is like, well, I can't have this. I got to, you know, she's like my girl or whatever, whatever the my countess is interested yeah. in for. Well, yeah, we don't know that yet. That's the mystery of the movie. But, uh. So she goes after and then Valerie says that she wanted to try it, but it feels demeaning, you know? So she knew that they were having a, that that was a sexual act. He wasn't beating her. She knew it was a sexual act. She was just trying it because she did see how even she was turned on by the dead body. What? I think she was, she was, I think Valerie is turned on by his aggressive dominance of her. Somehow that. Like satisfied because that's basically the countess then subverts it, uh, makes the, Stefan weak by in, catching him in, in the a bus. setup, and then she asserts herself and becomes that dominant character in Valerie. But in the bus, in the bus, right away, she's like, "You got, you know, you got excited when you saw the dead body." He's like, "And you, you get excited by telling me that you know, you know." I mean, yeah, I, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like We're yeah, I mean, she's not fucking innocent. No, she's she's, not. she's creeping into the world of sadomasochism or whatever. And then she finds so, out she doesn't like it. So now that we we figured on the the weird gay Stefan fucking thing, let's look at the other aspect of this whole fucking movie. Like the whole point of this goddamn movie is is the is, tree that everybody keeps walking through. No, the yeah. uh, <laughs> the countess keeps referring to what men are. You know, <laughs> men are these these vicious things, and women have love with each other, and like 
I mean, it's cr- it's actually well, yeah, really she's weird. She's a predatory lesbian vampire. I mean, that's what you would say to your would you know a better title for this movie. Predatory <laughs> lesbian vampire. You know, she's trying to she's trying to break the relationship between Stefan that's and Valerie sure. so she can have Valerie all to herself, or apparently replacing I- Ilona, yeah. who is depressed and wants out of this like yes. you know eternal <laughs> relationship yeah. with the count countess. <clears throat> So she has Ilona go sleep with Stefan. She goes to console Valerie, and then like, look, I'll show you what men are like, and takes her back. And you know, there, which I don't think she counted on the whole accident, the right? Dead. Yeah, that, she, yeah, I think Valerie was supposed to walk in and Stefan and uh, Ilona in bed. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. unfortunately, apparently, vampires in this movie can't go into running I don't water. Think she's a vampire. Well, whatever she, she is, is definitely afflicted with evil. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's yeah, yeah, running water before is when it's raining. Running out and like Ilona is going to leave. I'm leaving you, and she's like, "You don't be ridiculous. Like, you can't go outside." Running water is like yeah. one of my favorite, like old timey, like anti evil recipes that they don't use in movies anymore. You know, it, it was supposed to be like they can't cross a running stream. That's yeah, why Sleepy yeah. Hollow can't cross the bridge. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, she, so I, I like that they use that in this, even though they use it in a shower. Yeah, which she's a stupid vampire anyway for staring at him while he's taking a shower completely naked. It's like, well, what do you want, woman? Yeah. What do you think is <laughs> So he's like, get in the shower with me and pulls her in. You're like, no, no, no. And then uh, some really awkwardly staged uh, a comedy stuff. of errors happens. Yeah. yeah. Which ends up with her falling on a uh, straight razor. Shaving it's like razor. sitting straight she, up? She, gra- she grabs it for like 10 minutes and yells. <laughs> oh, I can't let it go. She can't. Oh. She can't. That's the one oh. thing she grabbed onto was the straight razor. And that's almost a foreshadowing to a later death scene that is, like, that. if that's ridiculous, this is tops that. <laughs> with, the, with the bowl, the crystal oh, bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, the crystal <laughs> bowl is crazy. We'll get there. Yes. Sure. Yeah, so was that even a death scene? I don't know. It, it, well, I think so. But, I, you know, I can see this comedy verse thing happening because, like, they're all slippery. They've just been in, uh, you know, the bath. There's tile sure, on the floor. Yeah, it was just very weird. But like the, How do you I set a straight movies. razor sitting straight up? The losing your balance, not being able to grab anything on the shelf except for the straight razor. Oh, then, nail polish, oh, toothpaste, oh, oh, as if, oh, as if it were oh. electrified, not being able to let go. <laughs> and then... <laughs> she turns the faucet on, then grabs her, and she, no, she grabs the electric razor, then turns the faucet on. Ah, it's just this, like... See, the comedy is in the wide the shot of that scene. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> because yeah. all, it's all in close-ups, but if you saw the wide <laughs> shot of that scene, that'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because then he's like, oh, I'll help you. And he, like, <laughs> right. slams yeah, her into the wall. He steps and then... on the floor and then slides across yeah. the tile he for 10 minutes. He should have stepped on a fucking bar of soap. That would have, like, made it priceless. <laughs> like, no problem, I'll help. And then it, like, hits the wall five times, knocks <laughs> yeah. the straight razor on the floor. Lands in her mouth, gulps it down. <laughs> <laughs> it starts burping up she bubbles. She dies, but with bubbles coming out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. The remake of this scene. What are we doing? Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so they burst in. It's like, I love like how I mean automatically it's crazy because automatically chick well it's so weird because I like weird. how Valerie she's able to kind of stay cl- I mean she thinks this lady's creepy she doesn't yeah. like that she can see how this lady like you want to fuck my husband she sees that clearly right that's why she's like you disgust me no you, that, she was saying that because I think at that the moment where she says because you know the countess and Valerie go off and spend some time together and I think at some point, like, the Countess bends over and kisses, kisses her. her hand. And at that moment, I, the way I read it is at that moment, you know, Valerie realizes that the Countess, you know, has, like, a lesbian uh, attraction to her. So you disgust me. And I think it's, like, coupled with the fact that she's, like, obviously into, you know, talking about at least or entertaining, you know, like, these ideas of ghoulish, you know, murders and stuff. Oh, yeah. fascinating, but, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ghoulish, but fascinating. There seems to be a, I mean, within the seduction, depending on, like, when Valerie's right around the Countess, she's, like, totally, like, you know, putty in her hands. But, like, the farther away she gets from her, she'll start going back to Stefan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she'll start to forget all that, you know, and, like... Well, that, I think that really kicks in after, you know, it's like, so, I mean... You know, from Valerie's point of view, she's just walked in, found out, A, that, her, you know, her husband of three days, right, is now cheating with her. Yeah. That he killed, you know, he has this thing about, you know, murder, blood, and, Which you know, what, way, and he killed ever, this girl. Did we ever see where the straight razor actually went in? Because it's I like it went in her back. She was like holding back. it. She was holding it. And she put her hand down to, to 
to stop herself from falling, and, it and then he falls on her, and it shoves it into her back. Right. Right. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He apparently passed out for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you get I was that like, nice oh, shot what have I done? But that's interesting, too, I guess, the way that Stefan responds to that is, you know, I guess from what we had seen of him right. set up to that, I expected he something more. It? Yeah, but he's, like, in shock. Yeah, he, he just kind of like goes and, and, you know, can't believe what he's done. And the Countess, like, immediately takes charge and is, like, just ordering, you know, Valerie around, like, here's what we're going to do. You're going to go do this and get the oh, towels. She, like, and fucking, like, closet. shoves her head yeah, down. Yeah, it was yeah, really weird. Does. That's what She becomes like. Stefan, basically, in that moment. She becomes this, like, dominant, physically aggressive, you know, just ordering this other girl around. But I love that. Silly things about those chased away by garlic. And vampires shrinking from crosses. He kidnapped young girls and kept them chained to give blood. Blood for her to bathe in and drink. And she bit them everywhere. No. And then she pushed white hot pokers into their faces. And when they parted their lips to scream, she shoved the flaming rod up into their mouth. Stop it, blood. Beautiful red. Stop it! <laughs> You're safe with me. I kill no one. Again. It's difficult to forget. Ah, you will. After a while, it'll only be the remembrance of a bad dream. And then the remains of a remembrance. More and more faint in your mind. I have seen many a night fall away into an even more endless night. Nights like last night. Who do you think I am? A kind of ghoul? A vampire? Oh, no, my dear. If you think these ladies are something, wait until you meet Mother. She's something else. us now if you dare down a rickety staircase into a dank dark basement what awaits the saturday night freak show <laughs> welcome back ladies and germs to the saturday night freak show podcast as we continue our threat of world domination on your internet radio i'm your host colin and i'm surrounded by the internet radio superstars Including Stefan, I mean Brent. Um, well, you just fuck you. You stole my joke, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> Travis, did you say that? No joke for the week. <laughs> or did you think that? <laughs> no, I was going to do that. Uh, you stole it. Uh-huh. Sorry. Well, you could be uh, Valerie. Thanks. Uh, so <laughs> tonight's movie, I picked it. It was uh, Daughters of Darkness from 1971, a Belgian movie, but it's made in English with English stars. Uh, it's Belgian. Directed by Harry Kumel, who I don't know if he's done anything. <laughs> <laughs> After this, do you really need to do anything else? Yeah, uh, maybe. I, don't know. I did. Look, I looked him up, and he had like you know six or seven credits to his name, but uh, I am not familiar with any of them, and I'm not really familiar with anyone in the cast except for John Carlin, who was the original uh, Willie on. Um, Dark Shadows. I oh. say it was his name, like Willie Loomis. Is that his name? Yeah, Willie he was the groundskeeper. <laughs> Willie. Yeah, he gets, he's the guy who wakes Barnabas Collins up. And I want to say that probably at the time that this movie was made, Dark Shadows was still in production. So he was probably doing this like right, uh, you know. On and that's why hiatus. they just gave him a vampire movie. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This like, guy, <laughs> he does vampire films. He knows vampires. So, uh, I guess really quick, just for an overview of what it's about, it's uh, John Carlin and his young bride. They just get married. Uh, They're somewhere in Europe. They're on a train. They stop off at a place called Ostend, and it's like an 
off-season hotel that they end up uh, staying at. And the Countess Elizabeth Bathory, Bathory? Bathory. Yeah, Bathory. 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 Arrives. And if you know your history, you know, she was the blood countess. Uh, there was a Bathory, famous story. Right? Yeah. She uh, is a legend, like the female Dracula, Countess Dracula. There was a movie, Ingrid Pitt made uh, Countess Dracula. And uh, she's, uh, you know, killed a bunch of girls way back in the day. And then they walled her up and killed her. Anyway, she's the main character or the main antagonist of this movie. Uh, she starts making moves on the young couple. Uh, and she has a fetching sidekick servant. Sure. Renfield? Like a, yeah, it's definitely a secretary Renfield. Yeah, is that kind a, of a, a loner? What was her name? Ilona. 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 Yeah. So at first I thought they were like, oh, a loner. <laughs> like, <laughs> <It's> a loner. <laughs> Please come in. Yeah. Loner. It's a movie with, uh, I want to say, I mean, there's primarily four characters in it. Uh, one bellhop, Pierre. Pierre. And Pierre. one uh, nosy lobby detective. Boy. Yeah. Yeah, just one inspector guy. He's got one scene, and then he just kind of shows up throughout the movie until he dies. He's following it. Really, like, a a nothing character. But he had an awesome scene. One awesome scene. This is what, like, this movie's a little frustrating to me, because I always, like, I always complain about vampire movies from the 70s, just because I've watched a lot of them, you know? I just like, ah, fuck, you know? This lady looks like a painting this fucking guy has. So, like, oh, my long-lost love, blah, 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 blah. But... What this fucking movie has is an awesome, awesome, awesome countess. She's awesome. Yeah, I fucking love played her. By Every the, scene. The countess is his mother because dude's talking he, about his okay, mother. Exactly. Right? That whole storyline goes nowhere. Uh, if, if it does, I agree. Yeah, I it think was, it does. I have an no, explanation. Well, hold on, hold on. Let me. Not, can I explain it, this real quick? Well, hold on. Well, I, 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 my thought ends real quick. If if nothing else, it does end real quick because I forgot what the fuck I was gonna say. About the mother? Uh, no, if, uh, Countess as the mother. If, if, uh, f- <laughs> damn. Go. Okay, so as soon as they get married, the first scene is t- they're talking about how, like, oh, the mother won't like her, you know. Because the the guy, he's like, arist- he's an aristocrat. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Chilton from Manor. Sweden he's from or Chilton something. Manor. She's lowborn, basically. Yeah. yeah. And he marries her. Oh, right. If nothing else, I thought he was, uh, he, he was part of a, uh, vampiric family, uh, but was denying it. Yeah. And he didn't want to tell her right. about it, Valerie about it. Because they totally make you believe that. They totally make you believe that, like, this fucking dude knows what's up. Right. Oh, I this never got knows what's going on. Well, you, what do yeah. you mean? Because then he calls. What are you like? Okay, he's like, he's like, yeah, I'll call my mother when we get to the hotel. Then he, like, walks up to the Pierre, the bellhop, and he's like, will you please phone my mother for some reason? Like, I can't do it myself or whatever. And hands him a message like, say there was no reply. It's like, <laughs> okay, so obviously this guy's hiding some shit from his yeah. like, And he always has, like, really, like, fucking mean looks. Like, yeah. off into the, like, you know, the, the camera in the corner or whatever the fuck. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, when I first saw this, I read that as, like, you know, because he had married this girl, mother just wasn't going to like it. And clearly, mother is a dominating presence but, in his but life. But then he puts, like, an, like, a fucking mean look on his face where you're like, that fucking guy. I mean, you yeah. automatically just like, oh, she's a sacrifice or something. See, like, see, I, but, yeah, but when you I actually not, find out who mother is, I think it, it, it explains all that. Because, okay, is? okay, yeah. okay, yeah, I want to well, get to that. Mother's the dude on the phone that we never see. Again. Just a dude on. Well, you see but him. Mother does exist. But though. he's like, yeah, a, mother exists. When he when he finally makes the call, this, yeah. this is like, I mean, this is why I kind of like this movie because it, it it you know it's going to be there's vampires in it. You know, I mean, although they're vampires, there? where they basically yeah try to get rid of that as much as possible. Yeah, they do. You know, so it's like revisionist yeah, vampir- that, yeah. vampirism, but. I like the fact that, like, Stefan and Valerie have, like, this thing going on between them that is interesting for, like, the first half of the movie until the Countess becomes, like, the more dominant character, yeah. at least in the second half. I think this, the wind comes out of Stefan's sails once he actually does make the call to Dreaded Mother. And then you find out, like, it cuts to Chilton Manor, and in, like, this arboretum, yep. that's the right word, yes. there's this... Uh, I mean, what do you say? Flaming Queen. He looks like a gay dude. vampire. Yeah, it's a dude in pancake makeup, like, and he's he this, he's this fey lips. guy, like, you know, doing the, like... He looked like the governor he, of Louisiana he, for, like, the second season He married of and True had Blood. a kid to continue his legacy, but other than that, he's gay. So, See, uh, I don't even think that. I don't think that Stefan... I don't think that's his 
quote unquote actual mother. Right. I think that that guy oh, no. it was you know somehow like Stefan is the rent boy. You know he's like some kind of like kept uh, you know partner, and so it's like he yeah. goes yeah that's what I get out of it. See, I was, so he and then he's like you know on like this travel through Europe and he's trying to like, you know, he meets Valerie. And so he's trying to like have like a normal relationship. And that's why he's fucked up like the entire way through this movie, because he's got like, uh, he has an affinity for death. Like that's like well, way over the top. I don't know he if it's death. Like, that's sadomasochism. What I'm, exactly. I want to talk about that just for a second. Cause yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought the game vampire guy was talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna keep Wait, talking. just so we're clear, the He's guy is not, not a, a vampire. vampire. But that is, is totally what you think. <laughs> that is what you think when you're watching this. It's like that guy's a gay vampire. Did you think that when you were watching it, Brent? Uh, I thought that he was a definitely a vampire. <laughs> he was like, so pale. Oh. I thought that Stefan was yeah. like part of affiliated with him in some way. Because when he says, you know, like, why did you possibly think that that could work? Getting married to this girl, it's like. What is he talking about? Like, he's talking about, like, bringing a human into their, you know, their... Well, talking I, about well, bringing a girl into their, well, like, boy love least, situation. Well, but I but, at least <laughs> thought they were talking about... Because once you start getting all into the S&M shit, how you start to find out that, like, when they... Okay, when they see a dead body who, you know, like, was murdered by the vampire, drained of blood or whatever, uh, uh, Valerie... Was it Valerie? Valerie. Right. Valerie sees that it excites uh, yeah. uh, uh, Stefan... And in a way, it kind of excites her too. So yeah. you're kind of like, is this what he's hiding? The idea that he's like this crazy sado fucking masochist or or whatever. And then I thought, I thought that the 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 guy who's uh you know called mother or whatever, I thought maybe he was like I don't know the head of his S and M club. I don't know, just something, right? I didn't. Mm. I mean, but uh, well, I mean that. There's no at no point in time do you think that Stefan is part of any sort of like gay shenanigans going yeah. on because like the first frame of the film is him fucking this girl. Right? Yeah, apparently that was a movie first that to open a movie really? with a sex scene. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, I, I mean he's, know that. he's established as a heterosexual oh. character, and then you like it's like wait what the so he's doing what like who's this mother you know so yeah. then it's like oh that's why he doesn't want to call mother. Because that's like you know his sense of identity. But why don't, is, but you know, why don't they go into that? Because they don't go into that. That's why well, it's so here's frustrating. Here's an anecdotal like, thing. Fuck? Uh, apparently that was uh, so the scene with mother was shot independently of the rest of the movie obviously yeah. and 